Well, it's a Friday night in Winston-Salem, and the eyes of the FPHL are upon the Annex, as it's the marquee matchup of the weekend, as it's the top two teams from each division, the Binghamton Black Bears and the Carolina Thunderbirds, set to do battle for two games here this weekend in what should be a barn burner of a series. Both these teams saw each other just over a month ago in Binghamton and resulted in a split, a 5-4 shootout victory in Friday night as the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena that saw the Thunderbirds win one to nothing in a shootout. They took two points there. And then in game two on Saturday, though, it was Binghamton defending home ice as they were able to come away with three third period goals to take down the Carolina Thunderbirds by a score of four to two. But a month has gone by. Both these teams have remained red hot. Thunderbirds have won their last seven. Binghamton on the other side has won five of their last six. And now the two sides are ready to be able to knock it down and drag it out here this weekend. It's game one of two here from Winston-Salem. It's the Carolina Thunderbirds and it's the Binghamton Black Bears, and it's coming up here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. Welcome inside the broadcast booth for the first time this weekend. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. Thanks for having you along for the ride from wherever you may be, and this is an exciting weekend here at the Annex. A big matchup here still early on in this season before we've even reached the new year, and it really starts with how these two sides have gone off to the start this year. Binghamton 11-1-3, only one regulation loss. On the other side, it's Carolina sitting at 11-2 through their first 13 games, seven regulation wins with two overtime wins and two sh and two shootout wins. That has allowed for them to accrue 29 points. They are in a tie for first place with the Columbus River Dragons in the Continental Division of the FPHL, while Binghamton right now is the point leader in the in the whole league, sitting at 35 coming in to this weekend. These two sides saw each other a little about a month ago up in Binghamton, and it was a very, very fun series between the two sides. Two high-scoring matchups. That Friday night game, Thunderbirds came away with two points in a game that the head coach Steve Harris said they didn't steal but they were able to go in there and do enough to be able to pick up a victory there and then in game two they just kind of ran out of gas a little bit as that one continued to go on and it's a high powered attack for this Binghamton Black Bears team. They come in with a massive goal differential and since they've seen the Thunderbirds back at the second weekend of November they have put up at least five goals in five of the six games. That one was a loss to Watertown that they dropped five to one but other than that they put up eight goals in one game. They put up at least five as I said and the rest. On the other side, Carolina, they come in winners of seven straight. They swept Blue Ridge after the Binghamton series. They then swept Columbus, and then they were able to take all three games last weekend against the Port Huron Prowlers, which we saw Dawson Baker. He was able to net a hat trick on Sunday. Came away with four points in that one. As Carolina, they had a third period comeback for the ages. They scored four and answer goals over the last 21 minutes of action. Be able to take a 5-3 victory against a feisty Port Huron Prowlers team. But last weekend, the first three games in three days, or if you look watch the coaches show or listen to the coaches show you hear head coach Steve Harris and say it's not three games in three days it's three games in about 48 hours with the 735 start time on Friday and then the 405 start time on Sunday so this week and you'll hear from him in just a few minutes the head coach Steve Harrison said things were a little off and he's not sure if that the team is hyper focused and ready for this matchup or they're gonna have to grow into the weekend a little bit but we saw two good starts from Carolina in that first series against Binghamton they leads after the first period in each of those games that was when the Thunderbirds were going through their woes in the second period. That made the games tight. And then in that third period in the second game, though, it was, Carol, it was Binghamton that put up three unanswered to be able to take all three points on that Saturday. But now it's been a month since the two sides have seen each other. Now they are set to meet here at the Annex. We got a great one on tap coming up here at 7.35 p.m. And we got a lot more to get to here on Thunderbirds pregame as well. Up next, you'll hear from the head coach, Steve Harrison. Get his thoughts coming into this one in a big matchup between Carolina and Binghamton. We're back to the Annex with more after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston-Salem. 
Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool in Cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Back here on Thunderbirds pregame, getting you ready for Carolina and Binghamton second series this year between the two sides. Being joined by the head coach Steve Harrison as we continue on Thunderbirds pregame and coach uh, off to a great start here this year, eleven and two over the first month, month and a half. Uh, what has been uh, the biggest factor to the team success here early on? Well, I think it's our consistency away from the puck. Uh, you know, we, we've got a good. Uh, we've played very well when we don't have the puck, and, and when we've had the puck, we, we, we've had uh, uh, we've worked hard and, and got opportunities and scored goals so I, I think just a combination of everything we we haven't had our really highs we, you know we haven't scored nine and, and we haven't given up nine so I, I think just a consistency so far which has been really nice to see her so early in the season but uh, you know I think we can even be better uh, as I said we've had a few highs and lows but nothing major and so as I said I just think it's the consistency we've had so far. Now coming off a three and three three games last week against Port here on how has uh, the energy at practice been here this week? Well it's been a little off I, I, I think everyone's kind of thrilled you and I have even talked about it. I, I think ourselves just, you know, we've we, we started to get into a routine the first five or six weeks there, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, you play three in two days or in two days, and I, I think it's thrown us off a little bit. And uh, uh, the last two days we've had little discussions with the team about getting prep, uh, prepared, and I think everyone's looking forward to this weekend. Binghamton is a great hockey team. Uh, they're going to come in storming, and uh, uh, they're coming in a day early, so so we know they're going to come to play, and uh, it's going to be a great uh, test for us uh, to, to come off last weekend and, and, and see how we play this weekend. Now, I've already seen once here this year, you get the split up in Binghamton now here at home. Uh, what do they do that it's allowed for them to be uh, so successful and be one of the strongest teams in the league so far? Well, if you look at the goals for, they, they've scored more than probably, I think they might have scored more than anybody or, or they're right up there. So they, they've scored a lot of goals and uh, they like to play a freewheeling type of game. And uh, uh, so, so we're going to have to play again. And I consistently say this about our, our play away from the puck. And that, that's what I'm most proud of is how we're playing away from the puck and, and our goals against. So uh, we're going to have to play that type of style and when we get our opportunities uh, uh, I think we've got a lot of skill here too so I, uh, w when we get the puck and, and we get our opportunities we're going to score too but it's away from the puck for us. Now in addition to the team here this week coming back is Roman Kramer what does he bring to this organization? Well he's a highly skilled guy and uh, you know I'm going to put him back with Ford and Baker and, and, and that line there just gives a little different flavor I like the way Dom's played with them uh, they've had some opportunities uh, Dom got a couple of important points for us in the last few games so uh, but he, he just brings a different element, a little more freewheeling, a little more uh, um, uh, offensive ab of ability at, at this time. I think Dom eventually will get there, but uh, it just gives us a little bit of more flavor up up front, and uh, I'm excited to see what he can do, and hopefully he comes in, and I talked to him this morning, just play as well as he can play, and, and, and he's going to help us a lot. Man, what does your team have to do to get uh, get points here uh, in game one? Well, we're just going to express you right off the bat. We're, we're going to have to, to uh, they're going to come in, especially when they're coming in early, we're going to have to match their intensity, because they're, 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 they're not happy we went in their barn and, and, and stole one from them right off the bat. And I don't know if we want to say steal, but we, we, we played well enough to beat them. And uh, so they're going to want to come in and say, hey, the, you know, we can win on the road too. So uh, it's going to be a great test. That first 10 minutes tomorrow night is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a little like when we played Columbus, a little more like a playoff atmosphere type game. And uh, I think the fans are going to enjoy it. Well, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck to you here this weekend. Thanks very much. Is that Coach Steve Harris? Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, 
your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Make Rita call. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Back here at the Annex, getting you set for game one of two this weekend between the Binghamton Black Bears and the Carolina Thunderbirds. Season series so far, split at a game apiece. Carolina taking the first game in Binghamton on a Friday night at the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena, 5-4. to four. Binghamton responding with a 4-2 victory in game two, and now it sets up for these two sides to have another good series here this weekend. These will be the final two meetings of the regular season between these two sides. So the next time these two could see each other would be in the Commissioner Cup Final. But that's still a long way away at talking about all the way towards May. Both these sides have gotten off to fantastic starts here in 2023-2024. Binghamton 11-1-3 with 35 points on the season. Only one regulation so far this year. Carolina with two regulation losses. 11-2-0 on the season with 29 points here this year. Carolina... 4-0 when it goes to overtime or shootout as they were able to come away with a shootout victory in Columbus a few weeks back and in Binghamton and then a pair of overtime victories as well. One coming last Saturday here at the Annex. It was Jacob Schnapp winning it with just about a minute left in overtime and the Saturday before that Gus Ford ended up having the winner just 41 seconds in to the extra frame. But taking a look at these two sides and taking a look at those first two matchups between the two between the two. Starting with game one on that Friday in Binghamton, Carolina, they got off to a fast start. It was Dawson Baker and Roman Kramer both on the power play being able to give Carolina an early 2-0 lead. But in that second period, we saw Binghamton be able to respond. Tyson Kirkby was able to make it a 2-1 game just about five minutes into the second period. Then three minutes later, it was Nikita Ivashkin who was able to tie it up on the power play. Then at Carolina, they found two goals from Jacob Schnapp. One right at the end of the second period and then one with just about four and a half minutes left to go in that one. He made it four to two, but then it Binghamton. They ended up drawing two penalties each in that one over the final four minutes of the game, and Gavin Yates with the extra attacker on, so six on four action, made it a one goal game with two and a half minutes remaining, and then with just five seconds to go, it was Connor Smith being able to find one in a mad scramble, and he was able to tie it up and send it to overtime. Tied at four. There was a lot of open ice between the two sides, or uh, in the extra frame, but the two sides went to a shootout when Gus Ford was the only one that scored as Mario Cap Valeri, he ended up saving all three shots as Carolina took two out of three points there in a shootout on Friday night. And then on Saturday, though, Binghamton, they were able to respond. Carolina, they got off to another fast start. Tucker first, he got his first goal of the year, just 69 seconds into the game, making it one to nothing. It would be tied up by Gavin Yates in the second. And Carolina, they would go to the third, though, after a goal with the advantage. They would lead two to one, but three third period goals for Binghamton ended up being able to give the Black Bears a four to two victory. So these two sides have played some pretty fun games so far and should be another one as well. Take a look at the Thunderbirds when we come back. We got more on Thunderbirds pregame after this. This is Thunderbirds hockey.
Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up, everybody? My name is Zach Taylor, and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds, and we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day and go Birds. Back here at the Annex, getting you ready for game one of two this weekend between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Binghamton Black Bears. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. So we continue with our pregame coverage of this one, taking a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds coming in to this evening's matchup. They've won seven in a row, coming off a sweep of Port here on last weekend, four to one on Friday, three to two overtime victory on Saturday, then a five three come from behind victory in the third period on Sunday. That's on Dawson Baker record a hat trick as well as pick up four points in the first star of the game. So Carolina has not lost since the last two times, or the last time these two sides have seen each other back in Binghamton a month ago. So Carolina going to try and continue their winning ways, currently sitting at a tie for first with the Columbus River Dragons for in the Continental Division. Both teams sitting at 29 points. They're led by Gus Ford, who's got 12 goals on the year. He also is tied for the team lead in points as well with 21. Peter Panacek, he has 21 points. Who will, a little bit differently than Gus Ford. Ford with 12 goals and 9 assists. Peter with 3 goals and 18 assists here this year. Those 18 assists have him in the top 2 in the FPHL coming in to this evening. Some roster news as well this week for Carolina. It saw the departure of Gregory Felder, so only five defensemen here this evening for Steve Harrison, but also he gets an addition, a re-addition to the forwards, and that is Roman Kramer. He's back from a stint with the Knoxville Ice Bears in the SPHL, in which they saw him record a hat trick at one point in one of his games up in the SPHL. And so now, after playing for starting the year with Steve Harrison, going to play for Andrew Harrison at Coach Steve Harrison. Harrison's younger brother, he's now back here in Winston-Salem, and he is suited up here for this weekend. He's joining Gus Ford and Dawson Baker back on that first line. That's a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds coming in to this evening, trying to extend their win streak of seven games. Up next, we'll take a look at the visitors, the Binghamton Black Bears. We're back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. 
Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersouth.allington.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. We're back here in Winston-Salem. Lights have gone down here at the Annex as the Thunderbirds get ready to take the ice here in just a little bit. Right around nine minutes away from our scheduled puck drop of 7.35 p.m. here this evening. Time to take a look at the visitors here in this one between Carolina and Binghamton. The Black Bears come in today with the most points in the FPHL at 11-1-3 with 35 points, sitting at the top of the Empire Division. They come in with a plus 25 goal differential, which is tied for the largest differential in the league. They're tied with Columbus, who also have a plus 25 as well, but they do have the most goals on the season with 71 goals here this year. They're led by Nikita Ivashkin, who comes in today with a team leading 20 points, 9 goals, and 11 assists for the Russian native. He'll be on the second line with Jesse Anderson, who has 16 assists, and Connor Smith with 9 goals and 8 assists here this year. One guy that they are not going to have tonight, that is Gavin Yates, who is serving a one-game suspension after actions from their last game, which was last Friday. They haven't played in a week, while the Thunderbirds coming off 3-3 three and three coming in to this week. Since the last time they've seen the Thunderbirds, they are 5-1-0. They finally got their first regulation loss, but they have put up at least five goals in all five of those wins since then. So Binghamton has continued to stay red hot here this season, and the Thunderbirds are going to try to be able to slow them down here tonight. It's mostly red and black, but some spots of black in green as well as it looks like some Binghamton fans have made their way here to the Annex this evening. But Carolina trying to be able to take down the Binghamton Black Bears and their second regulation loss or at least another overtime loss here tonight to be able to come away with three points and be able to try to get some distance with the Columbus River Dragons. But this Binghamton team, they continue to play well and so now Carolina is going to have to try to find a way to stop them here in this one. One guy that was on the roster but ended up being called up to the Roanoke, to Roanoke in the SP PHL is Brendan Stanko. He had a team leading 27 points across the first 14 games of the year. He was called up just a little while ago, and so he's still up in the SPHL. He is not here this weekend, so a big point producer and one that had a good series. The first time between these two sides is not on the roster here this evening. We got more to come here on Thunderbirds pregame as we continue to close in on puck drop for game one of two this weekend here in Winston-Salem between Carolina and Binghamton. We'll take a look at the lines when we come back. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool in Cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18-hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. 
For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield. Your hometown local grocery. We welcome you back to Winston-Salem here on your Friday evening. Should be a good one here between two of the top teams in the FPHL, the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Binghamton Black Bears. We are closing in on puck drop here as we take a look at the lines for both sides here this evening. First, starting with the visitors, the Binghamton Black Bears. Their first line comprises of Austin Thompson, Tyson Kirkby, and Andrew Logar. Logar, the low man on that one with only nine points, while Kirkby has 15, Thompson 12 on the season so far. And second line, that's a dangerous one. Connor Smith with 17 points. Jesse Anderson, 16 assists, as well as Nikita Ivashkin with 20 points on the year, nine goals and 11 assists. He makes up this. They make up the second line. Ryan Terse, who played two games with Danbury to start of the year and is now was just signed to a PTO earlier this week. He will make his first appearance in a Binghamton Black Bear sweater here this evening. He starts at the left wing on the third line with Josh Fletcher, who has four goals, and Justin Somero, who did was not on the roster the first series, first time these two sides saw each other and the 10th skater is Thomas Ray who's got four goals and four assists. The defenseman JT Walters and Liam Anderson they comprise of the first unit Dakota Bond and Daniel Stone are the second line with Matthew Boylar and Dan Weaver as the third line. The netminder this evening the starting netminder for Brant Sherwood is Connor McNanima. He comes in today 2-0 2-0-2 with a three flat goals against average and a 901 save percentage. His last time out was against Danbury a few weeks back. He ended up picking up a 5-4 to four victory, but gave up four goals on 45 shots against the Hattricks. This is his second start this year against the Carolina Thunderbirds. He started that Friday game, picked up the shootout loss after he stopped 22 of 26 over regulation in overtime back on November 10th. On the other side, for the Carolina Thunderbirds, who come into this evening at 11-2-0, they'll go with the first line, and they will start as well. Roman Kramer makes his return, playing in his seventh game here this season for the Thunderbirds with seven points on the season so far. Gus Ford, who has 21 points, tied for the team lead, and 12 goals, which is good for second in the FPHL. He will start at center with Dawson Baker, who's got... 17 points on the season across 13 games. He had a hat trick his last time out and had a big weekend against Port here on a weekend ago. They round out the first line for Steve Harrison. Jan Slag, Peter Benachik, and Yuri Pastuka, the check line. Pastuka has scored a goal in each of his last three games. John Batita, Nate Keeley, and Jacob Schnapp are the third line. Schnapp with a couple of goals and a couple of points last weekend. Batita, he was able to come away with a few assists as well as Nate Keeley, you know, getting his first FPHL goal last Friday. Dominic Dumas eats the 10 skater. Joe Kennedy and Tucker Firth they'll make up a defensive line unit here tonight. The starters on defense are James Farmer and Clay Keeley and the fifth defenseman is Justin Bioni. and the starting netminder coming into this evening is Mario Cavalieri. Cavalieri with the best stats in the FPHL in the crease so far this year. 197 Goals against average with a 935 save percentage. He is 10 and 2 to start off this year. That first series, he started both games against Binghamton, where he stopped 81 of 89 shots, including 46 of 49 in game number two. So Mario Cavalieri, he gets the start here this evening. He gets another one. He's won six in a row. So that's how both sides line up here this evening. The Thunderbirds again ready to hit the ice here at the Annex as Binghamton. They take the ice for the first time here in 2023-2024 here at the Annex. Carolina undefeated at home here this year, 6-0-0. And when they are at home, they have a plus 17 goal differential and are averaging four and a half goals per game. And they're going to try to be able to continue that stretch here this evening against the Binghamton Black Bears. We got a good one on tap, and it's just about to get started started. We'll take, it. we'll take our final break and come back with the National Anthem and puck drop. After this, Carolina and Binghamton, game one, coming up in just a few minutes. This
finish strong, start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care, we're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day, and go Birds. Hi, I'm Lake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds. Back here at the Annex, we are just about set for puck drop between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Binghamton Black Bears. Both sides have taken the ice here this evening as we are just about set for our national anthem here tonight. Thunderbirds in their blackout jerseys this evening, Binghamton in their white road sweaters. We'll turn it down to our PA announcer, Steve Marino.
Our national anthem ahead of game one between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Binghamton Black Bears. Welcome back to the Annex. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB as well. Pleasure to have you along for the ride on the marquee matchup of the weekend in the FPHL. Binghamton coming into today at 11-1-3 with 35 points on the season. They are in first in the Empire Division. On the other side, the Carolina Thunderbirds in 11 2 and 0 record to start off 2023-2024 sitting in a tie for first with the Columbus River Dragons with 29 points. The starting netminders here this evening, Mario Cavalieri makes his 13th start on the season, currently sitting with a record of 10 and 2, a 1.97 goals against average and a 935 save percentage. On the other side, it is Connor McNanima. He comes in today at a 2 0 2 record with a three flat goals against average and a 901 save percentage. Carolina leads the all time series 7 to 4 to 1 here in Winston Salem. They lead it 3 1 to 1. And we are underway here between Binghamton and Carolina. It'll be the Black Bears. They'll control first. They'll dump this one in into the attacking zone. Cavalieri touches it over to James Farmer who sends it to his D partner Clay Keeley. It gets tied up on the near half boards. Roman Kramer gets his first touch to it in his return here to the Thunderbirds. Carolina wearing their blackout uniforms here tonight. They're 2-0 in these sweaters. Puck bouncing around at the point will be whacked in. Here's our early chance. A backhand attempt gets sent all the way back down. Gus Ford will be the first one to pick it up. He'll play it out the near side. Set by a defender and walk his way out of the defensive zone. Here comes Gus Ford up the far side and goes up for a delayed offside and there's our first stoppage coming just 35 seconds into this one and already some extracurriculars, some pushing and shoving over on the far side. See everyone on the ice getting into it. As an official, pulling Tyson Kirkby away quickly, talking with Joe Kenny, and they're gonna drop the gloves. Here, just 35 seconds into this one, Tyson Kirkby and Joe Kennedy dropping right at the blue line. They engage, Kennedy a quick right. Trying to get the right hook over. Kirkby trying to respond. A quick jab from Kennedy. He's going with the left hand. Tangled up now. A quick right. There's a right from Kennedy. Doesn't connect. Now has him over the back of his shoulder. As a two, they're able to tap. And that's how we get underway here in Winston-Salem. Joe Kennedy and Tyson Kirkby, both with five minute majors. Here to start this one off, just 35 seconds in. So if you're looking for a tone setter, you got it. Here in the first minute in game one this weekend. So that'll bring up a face-off in front of the Binghamton bench in the neutral zone. It'll be Jesse Anderson in for the draw with Peter Panacek. And Panacek, he's able to win it. Back to Tucker Firth, who will try to clear this one in. But it's intercepted and played on the near side. Ivashkin, he got to stick to it as Cavalieri. He'll play it behind his own net. Comes near side to Justin Vioni. Only five defensemen for the Thunderbirds here this evening with the departure of Gregory Felder. Ivashkin picks Jan Salak's pocket, but loses it over to the far side. Vioni, who did not play in the first series between these two sides. Throws it back out for Dot and Panacek. He comes away with a steal. Backhands it over to Yuri Pasuka. Gets it back to Panacek. Leaves it for Salak. The one-timer. Oh, what a save by the netminder, Magnanima, and he's able to cover. Oh, a good luck there for the check line here early on. But Connor McNanima able to get back to the near post, get his stick there, and he's able to cover. And it'll bring up an attacking zone faceoff here just 71 seconds into this one between Carolina and Binghamton. So the faceoff will come to the right of McNanima. It'll be Nate Keeley in for the draw against Josh Fletcher. Faceoff is one back into the slot and it's taken up the far side. Quick pass by Ryan Terse. It plays off the boards. It's whacked back out. Farmer trying to clear the zone. This one will be sent back in on Cavalieri though. He leaves it for Clay Keeley. Keeley holds behind his own net. Now only four defensemen right now for the Thunderbirds with Kennedy in the box for the five minute major for fighting. Schnott leaves that at the red line. Clay's twin brother Nate will play. The, will send this one all the way in. It's played by McNanima. Keeley's able to intercept. Leaves it for Batsita in the corner. Backhands this one out to the far side. Nate Keeley the first one to it. Expecting a hit. He gets tangled up in the boards with Josh Fletcher. So now it's played behind the net. Batsita whacking at it. Going up against Matthew Boylar. It's played out near side. Batsita back out to the point. Keeley. 
over to Farmer. Plays it off his skate, taps it back in deep. Good zone time here for the Thunderbirds. This one will be cleared, at least try to, as Schnapp applies a big hit. Farmer walks in, a shot, and a save by McNanima. Good look there for James Farmer as this one's rattled all the way over to the far side and the Thunderbirds will go off for a change. Here's 17.43 remaining in the first period. Carolina and Binghamton just underway in the first of two this weekend. Let's play back out to center ice. Sucker Firth, he gets ran into right in front of the penalty boxes. Baker and now talking with Justin Samaro and it's played in the far side. It's left behind the net. Austin Thompson gets dispossessed by Bioni as he throws a man down in the far corner. Binghamton able to get it back only for a split second. Stepping up, Ford goes down and now walking all the way in. Here's Liam Anderson spinning out back to the half boards. This one physical here early on at a fight. Just 35 seconds into this and some big hits already. Here come the Thunderbirds three on two. Roman Kramer up the near side at the dot a shot and a glove save by McNanima. And he'll freeze with 16.59 to go in the first period. So Joe Kennedy and Tyson Kirkby dropping the gloves. And now we've seen some crunching hits on both sides. You're just three minutes in. This game, one of a busy night in the FPHL. Four other games here on a Friday night. We'll get to those at the first intermission report as Thompson makes his way over to the bench. It'll be Panacek in for the draw with Jesse Anderson to the right of Connor McNanima. Face off tied up into the corner. Liam Anderson gets his stick lifted. It's played at the half boards by Banachik. Slides it over Salak. A quick shot. That one goes wide. Rebound attempt by Banachik. But McNanima is able to hold the near post and he's able to cover. So Thunderbirds with some good opportunities here early on. Early out shooting. Binghamton on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Five to nothing. Another attacking zone faceoff. Salak will line up at the top of the circle, trying to get the faceoff won by Panacic straight back. It is one. It's brought back out to the point. Keeley can't keep it in. He'll just dump this one in as the Thunderbirds have to get back on the side. Jesse Anderson plays it near side, walking out of his own defensive zones. Leon Anderson. He'll get past the red line, dump it in. Cavalieri dangerously plays it on the near side. Ivashkin gets it back out to the point. Anderson will throw it in. A quick shot and a save by Cavalieri. Jesse Anderson right on the doorstep after it's took a deflection. And Cavalieri able to make a point blank save here at 16-26 remaining in the first period. So the first action for Mario Cavalieri. And a big save there from the netminder who comes in today as the best statistical goalie in the FPHL. 10-2 here this season. His last loss coming against these Binghamton Black Bears in the game. He saved 46 out of 49. The faceoff is won by Binghamton. It goes off the skate of Tucker Firth. He now will try to leave it for Batita before it's played back out near side. Bioni with it at his skates. He's got Thomas Ray closing in on him. He slides it over to Dominic Dumas who gets crunched in to the door of the Binghamton penalty box. This one's sent all the way down. And it'll go for icing. Here is 16.03 to go in the first period. So Carolina will have another attacking zone faceoff coming off of the icing. They were able to get three first period goals in that first series between the two sides. Carolina's won seven in a row, dating back to that Blue Ridge series. They've swept each of their last three series. Binghamton has won five out of their last six. Face off to the left of McNanima. It's one and taken by Binghamton behind the net and played near side quickly to Thomas Ray. A stretch pass goes off a man, deflects all the way over to the far corner. Lined up behind the net as Batita goes one on two. Puck bouncing around, Dakota Bond, he's able to get it and play it up the far side. Now a quick snap pass, a little too much on it from Fletcher trying to find Ray as this one's sent back in. Dumas trying to get a stick there, but it's played by Daniel Stone, the Calgary Alberta native, and a assist in that first series between the two sides. 15 and a half minutes remain in the first period of what has been a entertaining first four and a half minutes as Dawson Baker backhands this one to Gus Ford. He's in the attacking zone. Kramer will throw one in that one. Saved by McNanimo. He's looking for the rebound. Farmer is not able to control as it's played back out at center ice by Clay Keeley. A quick snap pass. Farmer was just trying to get it on. And instead, it's controlled by Dakota Bond. He holds behind his own cage here with 15 minutes remaining in the first period. 
Carolina, some good opportunities here early on. The one shot, a point blank save from Mario Cavalieri for the Black Bears. Somero. Backhand pass, snapping it over. Andrew Logar goes far side. Austin Thompson will throw it in. Cavalieri got to stick to it. It goes high off of the glass, and it's be able to clear it out by Roman Kramer. Backtracking is Dan Weaver. He'll snap it over in front of his own bench to Thompson. Plays it out center ice. Roman Kramer able to intercept, trying to dance around Thompson. He's not able to, though. It's now the clearing attempt. Samaro is able to clear it. Play by Boylar gets it right back to Samaro. Thompson right at the blue line. He'll send this one into the corner. It's thrown back out in front. Goes off of the stick of Cavalieri and comes back out to the neutral zone with 14-14 to go here in the first period. Weaver holds on the far side in his own defensive zone. First line still out there. It's now the check line. They start to make their way out for Steve Harrison this evening. This one will come all the way in on Cavalieri, and he will cover with 14 minutes remaining here in the first period. A good first six minutes of action in this one as Tyson Kirkby and Joe Kennedy will go back to rejoin their teams. No score here six minutes in in game one this week in between Carolina and Binghamton. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready. In Winston-Salem, 14 minutes to go in the first period with Carolina out shooting Binghamton 6-2 in our Comtech LLC Shots on Goal Tracker. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. Great to have you along for the ride here on your Friday evening. Carolina coming into today, winners of seven straight as they are going to try to be able to add to that here today. The face-off out of the restart will come to the left of Mario Cavalieri, who's had to make a pretty big save here early on. It will be Jesse Anderson in for the draw with Peter Panacic. As they wait for the immediate timeout to expire, and are ready to get back to action. Face-off tied up. Sian Salak will step in. And this will be cleared by Bioni. He'll go all the way down. Chasing after it is JT Walters. No icing. He has Panacic, or rather Pastuka chasing right after him. He's now spinning away is Liam Anderson. Check line putting good pressure on as it comes out near side at the half boards. Pastuka backhands it to Panacic. Hops over his stick. Comes out far side to Liam Anderson. Played now in his own zone by Jesse Anderson, who's got 16 assists this year. No goals, though, as Nikita Ivashkin tries to dance in. He gets ran into by Bioni, as well as Tucker Firth, who sends him down to the ground by Anderson. He controls, but Bioni on him. will cycle it back at the half boards. It's played back out, a quick touch pass by Pastuka, and he gets it right back from Banachik. He walks in, trying to get over to Salak at the blue line, and it comes back out to the neutral zone. James Farmer with Pastuka calling for a breather. Farmer will get this one into the corner. It's shoveled along by JT Walters and Liam Anderson will flip this one back out to center ice. Farmer backtracks. Binghamton going off for a change. Quick stretch pass. Not trying to shovel it over to Nate Keeley. Instead it's taken by Daniel Stone of the far side now. It's played near side and dumped in. Andrew Logar getting that one in. It's held Joe Kennedy who's Got a five-minute major for fighting just 35 seconds into this one. He's back out on the ice. He now plays it out near side. Kirkby gets tied up with Dumas as Nate Keeley spins his way, comes near side. Nate Keeley ahead of steam, coming in the near tie, and a good poke check by Daniel Stone as the two collide into the boards. It's played out near side. Austin Thompson, he holds. He'll snap one over far side. Being able to calm it down. As Tyson Kirkby gets it in near side, a chance for Logar, and he gets ran off by Clay Keeley. Play back out to the neutral zone. Quick snap pass. Boylar will have to retreat. Dumas will go in to join. 
Hopkins played far side, a little too much on it. Dawson Baker plays it in the slot. For the shot, a save by McManama. As now a couple guys go tumbling into the net liner. Now here comes Binghamton on the counter. Here's a chance in front and not being able to get a stick there is Ryan Terse. As Carolina, they'll clear the zone, floating it back out. Boilar will club this one down, play it back in. Firth, he holds, plays it off the boards, and it's onto the stick of Baker. Backhands one to Ford. He's in with Kramer. It flips it over for Roman Kramer. Is now him and Weaver. They'll go after it. Weaver is able to spin away from him here with 11.34 remaining in the first period. Scoreless between Binghamton and Carolina. A snap pass, a little bit too much on it. This will go all the way down for icing as Farmer is able to win the foot race against Justin Samaro here with 11.26 to go in the first period. First period, as always this season, is brought to you by First Bank. Nearing the midway point of the first 20 minutes of the first of two this weekend. Gus Ford in for the draw to the left of Connor McNanima. Ford coming in today with 12 goals. He gets tied up on the face off and Binghamton comes away with it. Josh Fletcher sets one near side. Samara gets angled off by former Cavalieri pokes this one to the corner. Is now an interception and a good hit there by Gus Ford as he was able to send first into the boards. Farmer with the head of steam. Across the blue line, leaves it for Kramer. Dances behind the net. Kramer circling, searching, holds. He'll play it back out to the point, but Ford was going the other way. Ford back to retreat. He'll pick it up and snap it over to Tucker Firth here at 10.54 remaining. Here's Baker at the blue line. He holds. He surveys. Trying to send it far side to Ford, but a nice stick there as it's sent back out in front of the Binghamton bench. He'll be rattled all the way in. Firth, he gets dropped by Voskin right in front of the Black Bears bench. And here comes JT Walters. He'll walk into the zone and now get this one in deep. Firth back to play with a man coming on him. It's poked away by Austin Thompson. It's played far side. It's kept in. Connor Smith. Able to knock the puck down. Circles at the dot. A quick shot and a save by Cavalieri. Smith gets the rebound though. He circles. Brings it near side. Leaves it for Ivashkin behind the net. Ivashkin trying to come out forehand. Gets a stick lifted by Salon. But Jesse Anderson, he still controls. Anderson in the near corner. So Ivashkin trying to leave it for Stone, who will whack it in. First not able to glove it. Anderson in the corner. Firth trying to throw him down. Puck tied up here with 9.57. A quick shot. That goes off the leg of Slot. Goes all the way back out. Matt Manima, he'll come out from his crease as Pasuka closing, but plays it near side to Daniel Stone, who will reset as Binghamton got off for a change with 9.44 remaining here in the first period. Up the far side, Nikita Ivashkin plays it, trying to get it, and it's lost in the neutral zone, is whacked by Pastuka. Daniel Stone snaps it far side. Salak almost got there in time before a nice job by Anderson. Those two exchanging some pleasantries over in front of the bench as it snapped all the way in. Stone holds to the right of his cage with Jacob Schnapp in this third line out there. Here's Austin Thompson. Backhands it over, far side to Logar. Trying to leave it for Thompson on a give and go. Nate Keeley able to intercept as he snaps it back out to the red line. Bond circling, he's searching. Fires it far side. Logard is trying to find one into the middle of the zone. Clay Keeley intercepts, almost loses an edge. He gets it out to his twin brother, Nate, as Matita dumps this one in here with 8.53 remaining in the first period. Still no score between Binghamton and Carolina. Kirkby plays it near side at the red line. Puck's held up. Boylar fires it up. Kirkby got a stake to it before Bioni whacked it back out and it's sent all the way back in. Cavalieri, he'll stop it. Quick backhand. Bioni's going to have to chase after it going up against Samara. They get tangled up into the corner. So now a couple guys go after it. It's loose though in the slot. But Zita. And Thomas Ray all over him. Sends it back out. Schnapp is going to be the first one there as icing is waved off. But Dan Weaver. Walking through his own zone into the neutral zone at the red line. He'll dump this one in. It comes in on Cavalieri with 8.07 remaining in the first period. And that's enough for Mario Cavalieri as he sends us to our under 10 media timeout. Jacob Schnapp and Matthew Boilar now with some words right next to the Thunderbirds bench. This one physical early on so far as the two are still talking. Right in front of Steve Harrison's crew, but that brings us to immediate timeout. Good one here early on in Carolina. No score between Binghamton and the Thunderbirds. Back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready 
in Winston-Salem. Jennifer Saff, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. So no score between Carolina and Binghamton. Here in a good one so far, a physical matchup. So I, Tyson, Kirkby, and Joe Kennedy drop the gloves just 35 seconds into this one and with 8.04. Another 8.06, correct that on the scoreboard. There'll be a face off to the left, uh, Mario Cavalieri. Gus Ford's able to win it against Justin Samero as Ford plays it back. Looks like he kind of stick in the head as the official from the neutral zone. Raises his hand, and it looks like Carolina is going to be going to the power play. Looks like it's going to be Samero going off for two minutes. Here are 7.59 remaining here in the first period. Carolina to their first Little Italy pizza and Italian restaurant power play here this evening. Carolina coming into today on the power play at 25%. Binghamton, 85% on the penalty kill. Faceoff is won by Gus Ford, but it comes all the way back down to Mario Cavalieri. As Justin Samaro off for two minutes for roughing. Quick snap pass to lock in the attacking zone. Spins at the half boards. Back hands it over to Ford. Walks out near dot. We'll send it back out to the point, and the Thunderbirds aren't able to keep it in. This is their first unit of the check line with Gus Ford and Dawson Baker. Carolina, a pair of power play goals in that first series. Against Binghamton, the power play it was a big factor last Sunday. It's Cavalieri, snaps one to Gus Ford. Ford, he circles, has Fletcher on his back. He's able to dance away and dance into the zone. Gus Ford dances through. Ford ends up losing it, goes behind the net. Man loses his stick and it's sent back out to the point. Pastuka keeps it in, sends it to Panacic far side at the half boards. Gets it back out to Pastuka. quick shot. That one's blocked as Ford is down behind the play in the near corner. So Gus Ford down. Everyone here at the Annex holding their breath. With 7.05 remaining here in the first period, Gus Ford on his knees in the corner. Being intended to by Josh Linville and Damian Poole, the bench medics for Carolina. Coming back to his feet, looks like he has a towel over his mouth. And he's being walked to the dressing room with Josh Lindo. So for right now, Gus Ford to the locker room. There's 7.05 remaining in the first. When we get information on Gus Ford, we'll make sure to relay that to you. Well, so now Carolina without their lead goal scorer for the next little while. They still stay on the power play, though. It'll be John Batita in for the draw against Tyson Kirkby. Face off in the neutral zone is one. Kirkby plays it off the glass, takes a ricochet. Keeley has to wait for it, loses it at his skates. This is poked back out at the red line. Sent back to Kirkby. He'll wait, and he'll send this one in for Cavalieri to collect. 
50 seconds remain on the two-minute roughing call against Justin Samara. Carolina in their first Little Italy power play of the weekend. Here's Roman Kramer just back from Knoxville. Leaves it, top of the slot. Matita gets it back to Kramer. Kramer walks in far tight of the dot. Kirkby, though, intercepts, and I'll clear this one all the way down. With 30 seconds remaining on the two-minute minor and 6.28 remaining here in the first period. No score between Carolina and Binghamton. Keeley sends it far side. Dumas walks in, cycles it back to Jacob Schnapp as it took the annex bounce, and Schnapp's pass goes a little too far. Now it's a foot race. Jesse Anderson will be the first one to it. Far side, leaves it back, a quick shot, and that one not able to get all of it on it with Schnapp getting back. Was Connor Smith. Schnapp now to Kramer. Walks in the attacking zone. Kramer waits. Settles, gets it to Schnapp. Schnapp surveys, finds Salak in the slot, and a shot, and a save by McNanima, and it goes up into the protective netting as Samaro's out of the box, and Carolina, power play goes for not, and so now back to five on five action for the next 5.50 here in the first period. So a big draw here, trying to keep some pressure on back to even strength. That'll be the check line or Tucker Firth and Joe Kennedy. Faceoff is won by Jesse Anderson. Binghamton trying to clear, but it comes to Banachik. Banachik sends a far side. Kennedy will just backhand one. It's deflected by Liam Anderson. Played over in the far half boards. Quick pass comes to Ivashkin. He walks in with it on his stick. Ivashkin gets poke checked by Tucker Firth. Not cleared though, as he's able to get it back on the far side before Banachik lifts his stick and zips it far side to Salak into the neutral zone. Quick touch pass. Gets the Pastuka, leaves it for Panechik, back to Salak, and he's not able to get all of it on it. Got Ivashkin right there with him. Salak pushes him out of the way. Panechik cycles it over to far side. Pastuka. Deeks holds in the corner, gets tangled up, sent down to the boards by Liam Anderson. Salak still fighting. This one ends up behind the cage before Jesse Anderson controls. Anderson walks in his own slot and brings it all the way across the red line. It's the attacking zone. Jesse Anderson has got 16 assists this year. Throws one in front. Ivashkin circling. Comes out far side. Cavalieri is able to get his pad there. Ivashkin still with it though. Throws one in. It's saved by Cavalieri. Save and still loose in the slot as Pistuka. He's able to get it to Salak as the Thunderbirds look to get off for a change. Salak will dump this one in. It takes an annex off. No one knows where it was for a second as Dawson and Baker just off the bench wax it back in and it'll be controlled by Daniel Stone. A patented bounce there as now it's lost at the blue line. Dominic Dumas plays it back for Bioni. He gets ran into by Ray. Now James Former comes near side. Bioni trying to leave it for Kramer. It's taken away though by Fletcher. Fletcher will just throw one in. Farmer wax this one but this one will go all the way down for icing. So Dominic Dumas, after being the 10th skater here tonight, joins the first line with 4.08 remaining in the first period. Scoreless here at the Annex between Binghamton and Carolina. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Back here at the Annex, Carolina and Binghamton with 4.08 remaining in the first period. No score between the Black Bears and the Thunderbirds. Just a little bit of a different feel to that first series we saw, which we saw a myriad of goals early on. Carolina with three first period goals in the first series. Most of those, majority of those coming on the power play. And this one, the physicality has really set the tone and it started with Tyson Kirkby and Joe Kennedy dropping the gloves 35 seconds into this one. But this one has continued to increase in physicality. If you're just joining us, Gus Ford, he ended up going off to the uh, locker room while the Thunderbirds were on the power play with an undisclosed injury. And so now Dominic Dumas, who's in for the draw, joining the first line as the 10th skater here tonight. So 408 remains here in the first 20. Well, you Tyson Kirkby and Dominic Dumas in for the draw. It's the right of Mario Cavalieri in the defensive zone. 
Face off is won by Kirkby. Back to the point. A quick shot. That one knocked out in the slot. Puck loose and it comes back out as Cavalier is able to hold his crease. Dawson Baker stops on a dime. Gets it to Roman Kramer. Kramer into the attacking zone. Leaves it for Farmer. Top of the dot. Quick shot and a save by McNinema. And he covers with 3.51 remaining. But a good look there for Binghamton. They've just been trying to get shots in quickly on Cavalieri. And trying to find something on a rebound or something just outside of the crease in the slot. So far, the shots on goal tracker brought to you by Comtech LLC. Both sides put nine shots apiece. Face off to the left of McNanima. Tied up on the face off. Kirkby wins it back and is played on the far side by Dakota Pond. Tries to zip one back down. Baker whacks it at the blue line, but Kirkby intercepts across the red line. Trying to get it to Thompson. A little too much on it. It's Clay Keeley. Will play it to Kramer. Now it's left for Dominic Dumas. Dumas trying to dance in. Boylar able to clear, though. And it's Clay Keeley. He's back down to collect. Here with 327 remaining in the first period. No score between Carolina and Binghamton. On the far side, Dawson Baker. Then hands it over to John Batita. Just off the bench, Nate Keeley. Will be the first one to it in the corner in the attacking zone. Going up against Weaver. Spins away. Brings it out far side. Now zips it over to Bitsita. And this one trickles in on McNanima. As he covers with 307 remaining. There's a more pushing and shoving after the whistle, but two signs. Clear it up, and now it will be an attacking zone face off. Big draw here for Nate Keeley. Going up against Jesse Anderson. Keeley's able to win the draw. Schnapp. It's a poked away, and it comes to Ivashkin at the red line, trying to dance around Farmer. He stands him up. Cavalieri behind his own cage with a man right behind him. Puck bouncing around. Ivashkin couldn't control. Farmer trying to dance away. He gets sent down. He just pokes it along to John Petita. Petita, a quick touch pass to Nate Keeley, who comes with Schnapp into the attacking zone. Keeley against Boylard. Has on the back end. Throws it off the side of the cage. Schnapp collects. Trying right, to throw him back out in front. But it's intercepted. He's trying to find Batita in the slot and sends Boylar. Stretch pass, Farmer able to whack it. Schnapp has to get back on side, and this comes all the way back in on the Binghamton netminder, Connor McNanima. Here are 225 remaining in the first period. Scoreless between Carolina and Binghamton. Here in the first of two this weekend. Here's Anderson, walks in in the slot. Anderson gets a stick lifted by Kennedy. Thrown off the pad of Cavalieri. Now it's loose behind the net, though. A quick pass comes out near side. Ivashkin trying to dance through black sweaters. He'll be whacked back in. Chasing after it, Jan Salak with Connor Smith. Salak will spin away. Has it on the forehand. Gets to the Panagic. Over to Pastuka, who's got three goals in his last three games. Pastuka at the dot. Surveying, throws it in. McNanima doesn't know where it was, but it went off of him. Manachik instead circles in the corner. Back ends it back out to the point. Clay Keeley, D to D pass to Firth. He'll just throw one in and it takes a deflection and goes up wide on the far side. It's played by Pastuka. Back to Manachik. Here's sign surveying, looking. He's trying to find Firth, but had, didn't have a lane. Manachik dancing back to the point. Salak. Dances the blue line, leaves it for Clay Keeley. Walks in, far dot. Clay Keeley back in. That one ends up in on McNanima, but it's controlled behind the net by JT Walters. As Carolina goes off for a change with 75 seconds remaining here in the first 20 minutes of action. Carolina and Binghamton in a good one so far, but still no score. Samara pokes it over the Dumas. Dumas into the attacking zone. He walks in. He Disposes of a man. Back ends it back out to the point. Bioni over to Kennedy. A one-timer. Saved by McNanima. Rebound comes out near side. Roman Kramer leaving it for Dawson. Baker will cycle this one back down. That was a bouncing puck there for Joe Kennedy. Still got a good shot away. This one comes all the way back down. Bioni quickly to Kramer. Zips it far side to Kennedy. He'll dump this one in here with 39 seconds remaining. Here in the first 20 minutes. It's back handed over far side. In their own defensive zone. Andrew Logar flips it all the way down. Farmer, he'll touch it. He'll deke his way out of the way of Justin Samaro and zip it over far side. Kramer trying to get over to Dumas. A little too much on it. And this one comes all the way back for Joe Kennedy with 18 seconds remaining in the first period. Farmer gets it up to Kramer, trying to backhand it. But Stone will throw this one in on Mario Cavalieri, who will glove it. And he'll freeze with 7.6 seconds remaining in the first period. So one last chance for Binghamton here with an attacking zone faceoff. 
as they'll get the final opportunity and a big draw here for Nate Keeley against Tyson Kirkby to the left of Cavalieri. Nate Keeley's able to win it. Former behind the net. He's just trying to kill the clock. One second, and that will do it for the first period here in Winston-Salem. An entertaining one so far. No score, though, on our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal tracker Carolina out shooting Binghamton 13 to 11. But both netminders have been so far so good. Gus Ford went to the dressing room with an undisclosed injury earlier on in this first period. Hope to get an update on him here in just a little bit. But right now, Carolina and Binghamton in the third of four this season between the two sides scoreless after the first 20 minutes of action we got a lot to get to on the first intermission report busy night in the fphl also take a look at the first period stance too we're back with the first intermission report after this this is thunderbirds hockey Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Well, we're through 20 minutes of action in Winston-Salem. Battle between Binghamton and Carolina, two teams at the top of their respective divisions, and so far it is scoreless after the first 20 here at the Annex. Welcome inside to the first intermission report. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB as we take a look at the first period in this one. It got off to a pretty fast start. Joe Kennedy and Tyson Kirkby dropping the gloves just 35 seconds into the game. It ended up being a draw with Kirkby and Kennedy just both setting the tone here early on. Kennedy now to 42 penalty minutes here this season after he only had 50 in the regular season last year. But Joe Kennedy and Tyson Kirkby driving the gloves just 35 seconds into this one. And as the first period started to go, both sides, they got pretty good opportunities apiece. Connor McManama, he had to make some big saves early on. It was a good look for Jan Salak. Uh, just about two minutes into the game, the check line on their first on their first shift of the night getting a probably the best opportunity of that first period for Carolina on the other side Mario Cavalieri he's had to make a few big saves as well a point blank opportunity that he had to be able to stop that was the first shot he had seen all night after Cavalieri this is his third start against Binghamton this season McNanima his second against Carolina after he started only that Friday game against Binghamton just a, uh, just inside a month ago up in upstate New York but Mario Cavalieri so far so good tonight he stopped all 11 shots he's seen on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker on the other side Carolina with 13 shots over those first 20 minutes of action and it's been Connor McManama being able 
to stop all 13 he's seen here tonight. One point of interest or concern rather here over that first period was the departure of Gus Ford. Ford with the Thunderbirds on the power play but just about seven minutes left to go in the first period uh, ended up going down and he had, it looked like he was covering his mouth covering something on his face uh, as but he departed the game after that made his way to the locker room. We do not have an update quite yet on Gus Ford here this evening. We'll continue to try to find that out as the night continues to roll along. But after the first 20 minutes of action, Carolina and Binghamton scoreless. Here on a Friday night at the Annex. We got more to get to here on the first intermission report. Coming up next, we'll take a look around the rest of the FBHL for other games on tap across the rest of the league. We're back to the Annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fan. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Avis Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Back here at the Enix as the first intermission report continues to roll along. Scoreless first 20 minutes between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Binghamton Black Bears here on a Friday night in Winston-Salem. The first of two here this weekend with game number two coming up at 6.05 p.m. on tomorrow evening right back here. If you haven't gotten your tickets already, make sure to head to Ticketmaster.com or stop by the box office here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Don't forget, coming up on Tuesday, it's another edition of the Coach Harry Show live from Dave and Buster's over at Haynes Mall. Join myself and the head coach Steve Harrison as well as a special player guest as we sit down and talk about the weekend that was and the weekend to come with next weekend Carolina making their lone trip to Michigan. It will be Friday in Motor City, Saturday in Port Huron and both those games of course will be here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Well, busy night in the FPHL and a lot of games with a lot of implications here early on. And first one that we will take a look at as we take a trip around the rest of the FPHL is the one with the Columbus River Dragons, one involving them facing off against the Mississippi Seawolves. As Columbus right now coming into their night tied for first with Carolina with 29 points on the season, a 9-1-2 record. And they are at the first intermission at the Columbus Civic Center. And it is the River Dragons with a 12-4 advantage in the shot cut and a 2 to nothing advantage over the Mississippi Seawolves after the first 20 minutes there. Justin McDonald, he ends up getting each of the first two goals and that one for Columbus, who hold a 2 to nothing lead. Carolina will see Columbus for four straight starting on December 23rd, running all the way through New Year's Eve. It'll be... 
The 23rd at home will be Ugly Sweater Night, brought to you by Halo Lighting. And then on the 29th, Carolina will head to Columbus for a one game and then come back for the 30th and 31st here at the Annex. Come and celebrate your New Year's Eve here at the Annex. See that large puck dangling over center ice here at the Annex. That's getting ready to come down here at the end of the month. Moving on to the rest of the action in the, the league this evening, we take a look at the battle of the two Michigan teams. This one from McMoran Arena and Port Huron, the Prowlers and the Motor City Rockers. Motor City, one of the slept on teams here early on. Nine, two and three start with 28 points. They're only seven back of Binghamton coming into this evening. And right now with about seven minutes remaining in the second period, Motor City, a three to one advantage over the Port Huron Prowlers. TJ Sneath being able to give Motor City an early one to nothing lead just three minutes into the game. Liam Freeborn, he's the lone goal scorer for Port Huron. But Glenn Robitai, he has two here this evening for Motor City, and they have a three to one advantage over the Port Huron Prowlers in that battle. The Michigan teams, Carolina will see both coming up next weekend. One other game in action right now, and this one from First Arena in Elmira, New York. It's the Elmira River Sharks and the Watertown Wolves. Halfway through the second period, it's the home side, the River Sharks, with so a 4-2 lead in this New York battle over Watertown. Trevor Lord has two goals for Watertown, scored the first goal tonight in the third. So Watertown, they took a 2-1 lead, and they took that into the midway point of the first period with a pair of power play goals. Houston Wilson, as well as Darius Davidson, were able to give Elmira the lead, then Stephen Ford in the second period was able to end some insurance and make it a 4-2 advantage for the Elmira River Sharks who lead the Watertown Wolves 4-2 just over the halfway point. One other game is coming up this evening in the FPHL and that one is from the Raising Canes River Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It'll be Blue Ridge and Baton Rouge getting set to do battle here in just a few minutes. Those two find themselves at the bottom of the Continental Division in the FPHL, Blue Ridge 3-9-2 with 10 points. On the other side, Baton Rouge 3-11-0 with 8 points this season. But this one here at the Annex, about 8.5 minutes left to go to the start of the second period, and it's no score between Carolina and Binghamton. Good first 20 minutes of action. We'll reset things for the start of the second here in just a little bit. We're back to the Annex after this with more on the first intermission report. This is Thunderbird Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care, we're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up, everybody? My name is Zach Taylor, and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds, and we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day, and go Birds. Hi, I'm Mike Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds. Back here in Winston-Salem in the first intermission report. 
No score between Carolina and Binghamton here in the third of four matchups here this season between the two sides. Both these two splitting that first series just inside a month ago up at the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena. Brendan Riley with you here on the first intermission report. As we have about six minutes left to the start of the second period, and taking a look at this one so far, both sides showing physicality early on, being able to show some pressure and skill. And that's what you're going to get with two teams like this who have been so good to start off the year. Binghamton 11-1-3, Carolina 11-2-0. So both these sides, a lot of skill, a lot of physicality, a lot of strength, and a lot of speed. And it's been on display here for the fans at the Annex here tonight. But now going into the second period, when these first two sides saw each other back a month ago, Carolina was going through some second period woes. They ended up being outscored in the second period. Three to two over, and over those two sides. Carolina held a lead going into the third period in both games up in Binghamton. In game one, it ended up being a late game tire, too late goals to be able to tie it up for Binghamton in game one. It forced overtime. Then in game two, Binghamton, they were able to pull away with three unanswered third period goals. Take a 4-2 victory in game two. But now here in this second period, Carolina who have been able to improve in the second period here as the season has continued to roll along. Now he's trying to come out and have a strong middle 20 minutes in the period of the long change. If you were with us on Thunderbirds pregame here, that coach Steve Harrison uh, uh, chatting and said it was a, it was an interesting week. It was a slow it was a slow week at times because of uh, because of the three and three last weekend. So it kind of shifted off the routine. It was usually you get back on Sunday or you have the day off Sunday if you're at home. You get back Sunday, you have Sunday off. Monday you get a workout in, and then on Tuesday you're back to the ice. But this time, no extra day of rest on the other side. Binghamton, they haven't played in a week, and they have only played two games dating back to November 25th. So Carolina coming in, and they put together a pretty good first 20 minutes of action. And now are going to try to be able to increase the pressure as the second period and this one continues to roll along here in this one second period between Carolina and Binghamton coming up in just about four minutes here at the annex and it should be an entertaining action or action-packed second period as well big matchup on hand and a good crowd on hand as well here at the annex on a Friday night first of two this week and game two tomorrow at 605 if you haven't gotten your tickets already make sure to head to ticketmaster.com or come to the Annex box office here at the at the Annex to pick up your tickets for tomorrow night. Thunderbirds wrapping up the sixth game homestand coming up tomorrow. They're trying to win their eighth straight here against the Binghamton Black Bears. So it should be a fun middle 20 minutes. The puck drop of the second period is coming up on the other side of this timeout. This has been the first intermission report, and this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Salem. Jennifer Saffer, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. 
Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Back here in Winston-Salem, getting ready for the start of the second period between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Binghamton Black Bears. A good first 20 minutes of action between the two sides, and now they are going to get set to do it for the start of the, of the second period and the period of the long shift. Gus Ford has come out onto the bench, but he does not have a helmet on, as now he's talking with our officials here this evening. So Gus Ford is on the bench. No helmet on. So we're still trying to get official word on Gus Ford. He's out there, but it looks like for now, Gus Ford will not start the second period as the first line comes out to reset things for Carolina. It'll be Dominic Dumas, Dawson Baker, as well as Roman Kramer. Clay Keeley and James Farmer, the five here. The period of the long shift. Second period, just about set to get going. Here at the Annex, no score between Carolina and Binghamton over the first 20 minutes. And we're underway here in the second in Carolina. They control the opening face-off. Clay Keeley dumped this one in. Back to pick it up is Dakota Bond. Plays it out near side. Logar snaps it over far side. Clay Keeley sends it to his D partner, James Farmer. Farmer trying to get it to Dumas. Goes over his stick. Logar and center ice is dispossessed, but it's whacked back far side. Stone, he circles, plays it out near side for Bond. Bond just trying to clear the zone. Farmer keeps it in. Will throw one into the slot. No one home, though. Kramer giving chase. This one goes into the far corner. Kramer able to win the battle, trying to whack it out in front. Instead, it's poked along and taken out near side as getting his stick there was Tyson Kirkby. He plays it with a high stick as now it's tangled up at the half boards. They wave it off, though, as Roman Kramer was the first to touch it, and Kirkby controls behind his own bench. See Gus Ford there at the bench now, playing around with his helmet. Here, just about a minute into the first period, or rather the second period here, which is brought to you by Flo Automotive. No score between these two sides. Ivashkin loses an edge at the blue line. Pastuka whacks it over far side and zip back over in Ivashkin's direction. Instead, the face-off as a whistle happens will come back out to center ice. With 18:56 remaining in the second period. Binghamton now scoring Carolina 3-2 in the second period in the first series. It'll be a face-off. Thank it. Center ice between Jesse Anderson and Peter Manachik. Manachik wins it and it comes out near side to Joe Kennedy. We drop the gloves. 35 seconds into this one. And Tyson Kirkby gets it to Bastuka. It's back in and back out to the red line and whacked back in by Connor Smith. Smith, he set us to overtime in that first matchup between these two sides. Just five seconds remaining up in Binghamton. This one cycled back in. Ivashkin, but Kennedy closing. Gets his stick lifted, and Kennedy is able to take it away. Plays the Panacek. He has to circle back. He'll dump it back behind his own net. Tucker Firth playing a bouncing puck in the corner on the backhand. Puts it off the boards. Goes off Pastuka. Comes to Smith. Walks in in the slot. Leaves it near side for Anderson. Goes off his skates. And... Pounces all the way over to Panacek. Quick pass to Salak. Walks in across the blue line. High slot, Salak. Runs into two white sweaters at the far half boards. He's able to keep it though. Salak still spinning. Circles back. Salak trying to get it back out to the point, but ends up being poked away by Thomas Ray, and now he has it. It's the attacking zone. Ray, a quick shot, and a save by Cavalieri. Rebound comes out near side. A nice shot by Pastuka getting back to be able to take it away from Connor Smith before it's cleared all the way back down and played on the far side. Liam Anderson gets poke checked in front of the Thunderbirds bench. Pastuka goes off for a change as Smith will dump this one in. Battles over far corner, Binghamton, they get a line change. Petita, nice shot being able to angle off a man. He's able to angle off Fletcher, who loses his stick and picks it back up. But back in front of the Thunderbirds bench is JT Walters. And now he 
Backtracks all the way, sends it near side across his own slot. Quick pass by Anderson, who gets ran into by Schnapp, and it's high up. Two men go down over on the near side. Batita at the half boards, pokes it over to Schnapp, goes off his skate before Samaro is able to clear the zone. A quick snap pass, Ray to Fletcher. Fletcher just trying to throw it into the slot, it's taken away by James Former. Nate Keeley with Farmer with them. Dolter's throwing in on McNanima, who will cover with 17 minutes remaining here in the second period. So both sides still trying to find their footing here in this second period. Physicality hasn't gone away. With both sides, both sides a shot apiece here in this second period. So here's Gus Ford back out onto the ice with a clear mask. He got hit up high. We saw him holding a towel, heading to the locker room, and now he's got a clear mask on. And he's in for the draw to the left of Connor McNanima. So the first line of Kramer, Baker, and Ford out there. Face off is one back to Baker. He tries to get a shot away, but it's closed by two Black Bears, but kept him at the blue line by Bioni. Turns the far side. Kramer a shot, and now it takes a deflection into the corner. It's whacked back out to the neutral zone as Kennedy was stepping up on the four check, and Bioni, he'll collect in his own slot. His pass takes a deflection, goes high in the air over the far side by the official, and comes out into the corner. Ford throws a man into the boards. That's JT Walters before it's kept at the half boards and rattled all the way back out. Keeley waiting. We'll backhand this one quickly to Baker. Just pokes it along. Kramer. To Kennedy, up the far side now, Clay Keeley. Across the red line into the attacking zone. Keeley into the corner. It's ran in, gets run into. And it's brought back out near side. Here comes Binghamton. Up the near side, Bond will throw it back into the slot. He was trying to get it to Austin Thompson, but it's poked away. Baker. Saucers one far side. Kramer was asking for it. He tries to dance around. Jesse Anderson, but Anderson dispossesses him. Near side, walking in. Connor Smith dangling. will throw it across the crease, but no one was home. Salak on the back end, circling. And he'll just leave it for Tucker Firth with 15.42 remaining here in the second period. Still no score between Carolina and Binghamton. It's not cleared. Bond will just throw it in. Cavalieri, he's able to get a shoulder there. Rebound goes into the corners. Back out to Anderson at the near half boards. Whacking at it. It's poked away. Ivashkin throws one in front. Smith sends one wide on the far side. But Panacek collecting. So Binghamton starting to get some pressure here as we're in the early stages of this second period. Panacek into the slot of shot, and that one goes wide. It rattles out on the near side. Panacek zips it over to Salak. A quick shot. That one didn't get through. Went off of Anderson. And now Smith at the red line. He'll hold. He'll dump it in on Cavalieri. He goes off for a change. And Farmer, who we've seen him play the puck out of his own zone and into the attacking zone so many times, holds behind his own net. Sure-handed stick there for James Farmer. He plays it, though, for John Batito. Tries to find it to Jacob Schnapp, but it goes by him. And on the near side, Fletcher run into at the boards by Tucker Firth. Now tied up. Weaver holds at the blue line. Surveys to Fletcher. He'll send one wide. Comes out far side. Boylorn stepping up on the fourth shank. And said it hops over onto the stick of John Batita. Batita to Schnapp. Schnapp cycles away. Ends up losing an edge. Batita runs into a man as this one, the hand goes up for a delayed offside. And Fletcher, as Schnapp gets back onside, plays it to Weaver. Goes far side to Boylock. Here are 14-16 remaining in the second period. Still scoreless between Carolina and Binghamton. Here the first of two this weekend. Farmer. Far side to Bioni. Plays it for Batita in the neutral zone. Batita will dump this one in. They'll chase after it. As Weaver ran into over in the far corner by Nate Keeley, but the hand goes up from the official back in the neutral zone. So with just under 14 minutes remaining, it looks like Binghamton's going to be heading to the power play after Nate Keeley runs into Dan Weaver over in the far corner. We'll get the official call on the other side of this media break. No score between Carolina and Binghamton here in the second period. We're back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fan. Introducing 
Tee it up indoors. Your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. So Nate Keeley to the penalty box for two minutes for a roughing call after he sent Dan Weaver into the boards. It comes at the 6.05 mark of this second period and a scoreless game between Carolina. So for the first time tonight, Carolina going on the penalty kill. Coming into this evening, 85% for the Thunderbirds, while on the other side, 25% for Binghamton. Four power play goals for the Black Bears over the first two games up in Binghamton about a month ago. And the faceoff comes to the left of Mario Cavalieri. It's won by Tyson Kirkby. Bond trying to backhand one off the restart. It'll be tied up in the far corner and sent all the way back out to the point. Bond at the blue line gets it back to Kirkby. Sends the near side, Connor Smith. He holds, trying to throw it in, goes off the skate of Clay Keeley, and this one's rocketed all the way back down as it took a deflection off of Bond. And McNanima, he plays it and leaves it. Just about 25 seconds in to the man advantage for Binghamton. Here's Nikita Ivashkin. Locks it into the attacking zone on the far side. Drops it back for Kirkby. Gets poked by Salak, but held in at the blue line by Bond. He dances the blue line. Shot goes high. Comes out near side. And a rebound attempt from Smith. Goes high off of the boards. Clearing attempt by Keeley. He's kept in and it comes, plays off the boards. Thompson backhands it for Smith. Leaves it near side. Ivashkin. Trying to throw it in front, and said Joe Kennedy's able to intercept as he dumps this one all the way down. Thunderbirds will go off for a change quickly as Kennedy and Slot go off Firth, as well as Farmer and Benzita on. 65 seconds remaining here on the man advantage. As now it looks like the clock has stopped. Play continues to roll along as Petita clears this one back in on McNanima. They just restart the clock, so a little bit of a time disparity here as the clock at the annex stop. And on the far side, at the red line, this one's dumped in by Boilar. Chasing after it, behind the net is James Farmer. He dances away from a defender. It's played back out far side as it hops over the stick of Jesse Anderson. And he plays it quickly to Thomas Ray. Across the blue line, and they're going to call an offside. So the clock shows 12.35 near the innings, 41 seconds remaining on the power play for Binghamton, but now the officials trying to figure out the time difference after the clock stopped at the 13 minute mark for a good 10, 15 seconds. Oh, the Thunderbirds bench are pointing up to the clock immediately. So now they run off some time. And they're going to stop it with 12.16 remaining and 22 seconds remaining on the power play. Now, Brant Sherwood, the head coach for Binghamton, he wants to have the conversation. Sherwood here in his second season, first full year with Binghamton with a 37-12-6 record. In his career against Carolina, though, he is 1-5-1. That one win coming the last time these two sides saw each other, as well as the overtime and shootout loss. Face off in the neutral zone. On the near side, it's won by Binghamton. Weaver plays it far side. Boylar will dance around Banachik. Puck runs into the skate of the linesman and is backhanded all the way down as the Thunderbirds clear with 10 seconds remaining on Nate Keeley's boarding call. Now stoppage. And it looks like Boilar is going to be going off. So we'll have four on four action for the next nine seconds as a cross check is called against Matthew Boilar. And so it'll be four on four for the next nine seconds and then a minute 51 in the second power play of the evening for Carolina. 
Faceoff will come to the left of Connor McNanima. Gus Ford in for the draw with Tyson Kirkby. Ford is tied up and it's one back to Vestuco. Back hands it over to Manachik. Keeley about to come out of the box for three seconds and two as Carolina to the power play for the second time tonight. A little Italy power play. Keeley, he gets off. Jan Salak comes on. Vestuco, one-timer save, rebound. Is loose in the slide and it's cleared all the way down. Good look there for Pasuka, but a good save by McNanima with the pen. Cavalieri, he holds it for Pastuca. With 90 seconds remaining on the power play for the Thunderbirds. Pastuca, he'll rattle this one around the board. Stepping up is Manachik. This one's whacked all the way back out. Ford trying to keep it in, but he can't. As it comes back, Thunderbirds have to get back on side. And it's touched and sent all the way back out to Dawson Baker. Baker at the red line. Trying to dump one in, but he throws it right into the midsection of Jesse Anderson, who now will walk it into the zone here in the short-handed chance. He spins as Binghamson goes off for a change. Puck bounces free. And now Gus Ford. Got a good one-two from Dawson Baker. Ford, near side, dances through, dispossessed. Puck bouncing around, far side. And McNanima, he's able to cover with 10.55 remaining in the second period and 53 seconds remaining on the two-minute minor against Matthew Boylock. Carolina already 0 for 1 tonight on the power play. That came in the first period after Justin Samaro. He was called for a roughing minor. And now a face off to the right of Magnanima. Kirkby and Benzita for the draw. Kirkby wins it. Back behind the net. JT Walters tied up with Jacob Schnapp. It's thrown back out. Benzita, he collects. Gets it back out to the point. Kramer to the top of the zone. Firth, far side. Dumas back to Firth at the flow logo. He thinks, sends it back. Dumas circles, trying to get one across ice, and it's deflected by Kirkby and comes all the way back down. Dumas is trying to get it to Roman Kramer, but instead the Thunderbirds recollect with 25 seconds to go on the five on four power play. Schnapp at the blue line will just send one in far side. McNanima plays it with the back of his paddle, and he freezes. He with 10.23 to go in the second. So the best look so far on the power play tonight was that slap shot on the one-timer from Yuri Pastuka. But a good save by Connor McNanima, keeping it a scoreless game here as we reach the midway mark of game one and two this weekend. Ford in for the draw against Connor Smith. It's one back to Pastuka. Thunderbird set up one last chance on the power play. It's left for Benacic. Half forwards down behind the goal. Ford trying to throw one out. Throws it back to Vestuka. Far side now. Baker. Baker. He holds. Backhands it over far side with five seconds to go on the power play. Salak into the corner. He'll get tangled up there with a man. As now Weaver, he goes down to the ground. Stick is lost by Salak as well as Weaver. Weaver picks his stick back up. It's back out to the point. Baker in the high slot. A shot on that one's block. Comes out into the near half boards. Him and Jesse Anderson go after it. As Baker ends up losing his stick. Anderson now tying him up, throwing him down to the ground as this one starts to pick up in physicality. Baker and Anderson still jawing as the puck is still loose behind the net. Wanachik, he comes away with it. Circles back out, trying to send one over near side to Pastuka, but it's intercepted. Now here comes Ivashkin up the far side, one on one with Ford. Nikita Ivashkin walking in a nice job by Gus Ford. Being able to poke check it away. Big play there by Ford. He now brings it out in front of his own slide. It's taken and a shot from Ivashkin goes high over the bar. Pastuka with the Thunderbirds now scrambling to clear their zone. They're not able to. Clay Keeley plays it for former. Keeley drops a man on the far side. As Ivashkin, he loses his lid. He goes to the bench. Farmer now, though, is still white sweaters coming after him. And it's played by Kirkby. Kirkby went now Salak. Buck bounces free near side. Salak, he'll clear the zone. Trying to get it to Pastuka, he'll just tap it. He'll go off for a change as back to collect is Daniel Stone with 8.47 remaining in the second period. Still scoreless between Carolina and Binghamton. Far side, Austin Thompson gets ran into at the half horse by Nate Keeley. Crunching hit by one of the Keeley twins. He'll be rattled in off the boards. Stone has to be quick with it as Batita coming after him. They now get tangled up in the corner. Shot throws a man in. Clearly a quick shot and a pad save by McNanima. Good luck there for Nate Keeley. Schnob intercepts, walks in, a shot. Oh, and a save by McNanima went off his mask. 
The far and afterwards, Matita runs into a man. And it's held in Kirkby with eight minutes to go in the second period. A good opportunity there on multiple efforts by the Thunderbirds. But Kirkby floats it over. Samaro in the near corner. Helmet still out on the ice for Nikita Ivashkin. A quick shot by Bond. Save. Rebound. Comes out near side. Cavalieri able to make a big save there. It's still low guard. Going up against Joe Kennedy who pins him into the board to zip back out on the near side. Here's a quick shot from Anderson. Save, rebound, comes back out. Front rebound attempt goes wide on the far side as Baker gets thrown to the ground by Justin Samara. So Baker down on the ground after Samara hit him high. And he'll have some time to think about it in the penalty box. We've reached immediate timeout. Dawson Baker getting back to his feet. And when we come back, Carolina back to the main advantage. No score between Carolina and Binghamton over the halfway mark here in this second. Back to the NXF for this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker. One with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Still waiting on the official word after Justin Samaro has made his way to the box. They put two minutes up now against Justin Samaro. Fans wanting five as Dawson Baker will make his way back to the bench. So Samaro in the box for two minutes. Carolina will go to the power play for the third time tonight. So they call it a cross-checking minor. Second weekend in a row that Dawson Baker, he's been hit after a whistle with a cross check. So Tucker Scandalberry ended up hitting him well after the whistle had gone. Scandalberry ended up being suspended two games for that incident. Because he didn't play on Sunday, but now Carolina to a little Italy power play for the third time tonight. Ford in for the draw. It's one back to the point. Kramer's not able to keep it in, though, as now he'll backtrack and send it over to Yuri Pestuka. It's it to Panacic. Walks into the zone, leaves it for Ford on the near side. Ford spins away, surveys, still has that clear mask on. After he left the first period, about six minutes remaining after he hit up high. Brought back out to Benacic. Sends it for Ford. Ford didn't have much time, and this one's cleared all the way down. Binghamton goes off for a change. Cavalieri, a stretch pass to Benacic as Binghamton quickly back out onto the ice. Ford. Well, throwing off of Anderson. It gets into the zone, but it's whacked all the way in by Daniel Stone as Pastuka collects. Minute 13 remaining here on the two-minute cross-checking call against Justin Samara. Got 6.39 remaining in the second. Both sides still searching for the first goal here this evening. Salak able to avoid the brunt of a hit. As this one's cleared back out to Bonacic in the near half boards. Sends it for Ford. Holds in the corner, throws it back out. At the point, Pastuka far side to Baker. A shot save. Puck loose in the crease. Bouncing around. Ends up helking out far side. Salak tangled up. They're able to keep it in though as Pastuka takes over. Leaves it for Baker, a shot, that, oh, and a rebound attempt. Baker gets it back, body's flying around, and McNanima is able to cover as he goes laying down, and he freezes with 6.08 remaining here in the second, and 38 seconds remaining here on the power play for Carolina, but a good look there, good rush for this first power play unit. These two sides still battling for the first goal this evening. They've been going after it so far. And physicality has been evident. It's Kirkby and Batita to the right of McNanima. It's one. I Binghamton, but Batita collects on the near half horse. Plays it back down to the point. Kramer 
Cycles it to Schnapp, who sends it back out to Kramer. Kramer just back from the SPHL. To Schnapp, he gets it right back. Top of the dot, walks in, trying to find Petito with throw behind him. And this one's cleared all the way down by Austin Thompson. Here with 18 seconds remaining on the two-minute minor against Justin Samaro for cross-checking. Tucker Firth. Snaps it to the blue line. Schnapp will play this one in. Trying to leave it for Dumas. Able to lift the stick. Dances back out to the blue line. Finds Kramer. Kramer. Back out to the point with Firth. A quick shot. Takes a deflection. Snap. His shot. Ends up going off the side of the cage. Samara out of the box. Back to five on five. Here at 524 remaining in the second. A quick shot from Dumas. Takes a deflection. Batita is going to be the first one to it around the corner. Plays it back to Kramer. A shot. And a blocker save by McNanima. Puck goes high in the air. Kramer plays it at first before it's eventually cleared back out. But it looks like they're gonna say it was played with a high stick. Well, they're gonna get Tucker Firth for high sticking. So Carolina will go to the penalty kill. And WTOB needs 10 seconds for station identification. This is Thunderbirds Hockey on WTOB. So 5.06 remains here in the second period. And Tucker Firth to the penalty box for a high sticking call. As now it looks like Binghamton wants part of the ice to be looked at. So this now the fifth minor penalty called in this one. And the second time that Binghamton is going to the power play. Both sides. Not able to find one on the main advantage. As now Binghamton, they get almost an extra timeout here. 5.06 to go in the second. Saw this last weekend at times. Especially saw it as well with the net coming off its moorings here at the Annex. And it looks like they're going to take... What it looks like, the media timeout. So 5.06 remains... Here in the second period, Binghamton it to the power play when we return. Scoreless between Carolina and Binghamton, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. They're still working on the ice here at the Annex. With 5.06 remaining here in the second period, and Carolina heading to the penalty kill after Tucker Firth was called for a two minute high sticking call. So even with six seconds remaining, they take the media timeout, as now looks like the ice has been fixed. And we should be set to get back to hockey here in Winston Salem. Still no score between Carolina and Binghamton. This has been a physical one so far. Saw so pretty high flying affair the first two times that these two sides saw each other. This time the physicality a little bit more prevalent. But now to the power play for the second time tonight is Binghamton. They're 0 for 1 coming into today at 25%. Carolina improving on their 85% on the penalty kill so far. Face off is tied up and one back to Dakota, Dakota Bond. Dancing on the far point. We'll circle the blue line at the top of the zone. Sends it far side. Kirkby back to the point. Bond trying to throw one in. It goes off of four and is cleared by Clay Keeley. All the way down to the netminder for Binghamton. Connor McNanima here with 4.45 remaining. In the second period, both sides still trying to find the first one. Here's Nikita Ivashkin. He gets ran into by Clay Keeley on the far side. And the twin brother, Nate, clear, clears this one all the way down. Good luck there for the two twins on the first 
shift on the penalty kill as now it's Kirkby. He drops it back for Bond. Quick touch pass from Ivashkin and Kirkby. It's tied up. Smith gets a leg to it. Bond keeps it in. Plays it near side. Kirkby walks out into the slot. Far dot now. On the back end. He circles. Thrown in front. Saved by Cavalieri. Puck bouncing around though. It's back to Smith at the top of the zone. He holds. Sends it far side. Kirkby. Settles it down, finds Bond, zips it near side, a little too much on that one as it was going for Connor Smith. Takes a trip on the top of the board. Smith, though, will send it back out far side to Kirkby with 41 seconds remaining on the two-minute minor against Tucker Firth. A one-timer, it's not all of it on it, but it doesn't matter as Ivashkin's loose in the slot, and he's able to tip it home. That's Mario Cavalieri, and here at 343 remaining in the second period, it's a power play goal for Binghamton, and they take a one-to-nothing lead. Here late in the second. Kirkby ended up not getting all of it on it with the puck taking a deflection and they give the goal to Kirkby. Even with Ivashkin right on the doorstep. So Tyson Kirkby gets his ninth goal on the year and Carolina trails one to nothing here at home. Back underway, Carolina with just over three and a half minutes left to try to find a response. James Farmer runs into a man in the attacking zone, but it's taken away. Far side and dancing in. Here's Samaro, ends up losing it. And here come the Thunderbirds with Roman Kramer. Kramer at the blue line, leaves it for Ford. Circles away, Ford tangled up now as a man goes down to the boards and it comes free. Samaro trying to get one far side, a little too much on it. This one not gonna go for icing as Clay Keeley leaves it for Former. 3.05 remaining here in the second period on the far side, Kramer. Across the red line, into the attacking zone. Roman Kramer spins back at the point, backhands it to Ford. Ford finds Baker in the slot, a shot, they score! Dawson Baker, who had a hat trick his last time out. Able to get loose in the slot and with 2.52 left to go here in the second period, Carolina ties it up at one. Baker's 10th of the year. And we got a new one here in Winston-Salem. Back underway. Lanachik intercepts. Throws it to Basuka. Goes off his skate. Played back in the corner. That goal by Dawson Baker brought to you by Riddle Tractor. Jan Salak near side. Lanachik running into Anderson before he's able to win it here on the near half board. Carolina sensing some momentum. Lanachik. Finds Pastuka behind the cage, leaves it near side. But Natch again are hitting the side of the cage. He had some open space as McNanima thought it was going far side, but ends up being dumped all the way back out for Joe Kennedy. Kennedy backhands it over to Firth. Lost in the neutral zone, it's finds Pastuka. Locks in, a shot and a save by McNanima. And this one goes out of play after going off the protective netting. So Dawson Baker at the 17.08 mark. Just 51 seconds after Binghamton's opener. Has a side at one with assists from Gus Ford and Joe Kennedy. So the face off to the left of Connor McNanima. It will be Kirkby and Nate Keeley in for the draw. And it's won by Kirkby. Comes right back in on the netminder who plays it quickly. And on the near side, it's Andrew Logan. Petito waxes one off the back of the cage. Daniel Stone on the forehand. Plays it up. This takes a deflection. Comes all the way down. Will not go for icing here with a minute 48 remaining in the second period. And Joe Kennedy holds behind his own net. Shots in favor of Carolina. 26 to 19 in our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal tracker. Kennedy surveying. Finds Petito. Plays it far side. Nate Keeley sends a man down. Now he's in two on one shot. Keeley near side trying to dance through. And a nice shot being able to go down and be able to stop the chances. Daniel Stone played into the near half boards. Threat still not over. But the puck loose at the half boards. Let's play back out to the point. Kennedy, he can't keep it in. And now he'll wait. 
And just backhand it near side. A Keeley getting a whack to it, but it comes to Kennedy. Across the blue line. Joe Kennedy, a quick shot, and that one sails high over the bar. Here was 60 seconds remaining in an action-packed second period at the Annex. We're tied at one between Carolina and Binghamton. Daniel Stone, he resets as both sides get fresh legs onto the ice. With 45 seconds to go here in the second. He still waits. Sends it over to Bond before it comes out near side. Now ahead of steam for Fletcher. Walks in before he gets Pocek. Cavalieri, he'll play and he'll have to cover with 24.7 remaining here in period number two. So Dawson Baker gets his 10th of the year. Gus Ford gets his 10th assist on the season, as well as Joe Kennedy. He's able to get his fourth assist in six point here in 2023-2024. 24 seconds remain in the second. Ford wins the draw to the left of Cavalieri. James Farmer in front of the Zamboni doors, walks it out of the zone and in it to the attacking zone. Farmer will just back in one. Now and goes awkwardly, comes back out in the slot. Ford not able to get to the bouncing puck. Now at nine seconds, here comes Connor Smith. Near dot, a shot that takes a deflection and goes up into the protective netting after Baker got a stick there with 4.6 remaining in the second period. But it will be a defensive zone face-off for the Thunderbirds. And Binghamton will get the last chance of the second. Anderson and Ford for the draw. The right of Cavalier, it's one into the corner. Clay Keeley will just back in this one out. And that's how period number two comes to an end. Electra pushing and shoving. Dawson Baker and Nikita Ivashkin. Two sides quickly disperse. As now the officials tell both the sides to get back to their respective locker rooms. But an entertaining second 20 here in Winston-Salem. Goals for each side. First one coming from Nikita Ivashkin at the 16-17 mark of the second period. That gave Binghamton a one to nothing lead. And then Dawson Baker, just 51 seconds later, ties us up at one. We've reached the second intermission here between Carolina and Binghamton. They're tied at one. Second intermission reports coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up, everybody? My name is Zach Taylor, and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds, and we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Back here in Winston-Salem, we've reached the second intermission between Carolina and Binghamton. And we find ourselves tied once again 
with both teams in the locker room this time tied at one. Brendan Riley with you here on the second intermission report after an action pack middle 20. And in that second period, you saw the physicality start to ramp up once again. And it started with Nate Keeley, who was called for a two-minute boarding call at the 6.05 mark of the second period. That ended up putting uh, Binghamton on the power play for the first time on the evening. Carolina would be able to kill it, thanks to Matthew Boylard, with nine seconds remaining on the power play for Binghamton, being called for a two-minute minor for cross-checking at the 7.57 mark of that second period. And so Carolina, they went to the power play for the second time, not able to find anything, but then they would get another opportunity. It was Justin Samara with a late cross check on Dawson Baker. And he would spend two minutes in the box, but Binghamton once again would be able to kill it off. So Binghamton is three for three on the penalty kill. Carolina 0 for three on the power play. And then at the 14:54 mark of that second period, Tucker Firth would be called for a two-minute minor for a high sticking, and that allowed for Binghamton to be able to pounce. As it was Tyson Kirkby on the far side, his shot ended up he didn't get all of it. Kind of a soft one-timer, but Nikita Ivashkin, he was free in the slot. He was able to get a stick on it and that tied us up at one or that made it a one nothing game in favor of Binghamton as Ivashkin he got his 10th goal on the season that's a team leading 10 goals after he was tied with Connor Smith coming into today but Ivashkin gets his team leading 21st point on the season assist from Tyson Kirkby and Dakota Bond so one nothing Binghamton in front at the 16-17 mark but then fast forward less than a minute later and it was Dawson Baker who was able to be in the right place at the right time as Gus Ford was able to feed him and Baker was able to snap one home as he was able to get the get some help from the crossbar but it ended up going bar down and Carolina was able to tie it up at one at the 1708 mark and that is where we stand here Dawson Baker getting his 10th goal of the season in his 18th point as he was coming off a hat trick last Sunday against Port Huron. Gus Ford ends up getting his team leading 22nd point of the year. Now 10 assists for Gus Ford who is playing with a clear mask after he ended up being hit up high in that first period. But Ford he came out for the second with the mask and now that's how he probably will be uh, setting up the rest of this one here this evening. Joe Kennedy also an assist on that one as he's able to get his fourth assist on the year. He's now up to six points for the Seattle Washington native but entertaining middle 20 minutes of action Carolina and Binghamton their side at one here at the second intermission in Winston-Salem we got more to get to here in the second intermission report, including uh, updating you on the scores around the rest of the FPHL. Mississippi in the midst of a comeback right now against Columbus. Columbus and Carolina tied with 29 points coming into today in the division. We'll update you on that and the rest of the action in the FPHL coming up on the second intermission report. One-to-one -one between Carolina and Binghamton. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. 
Maple Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool in Cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. here at the Annex. We're at the second intermission and it's Carolina and Binghamton tied up at one thanks to Nikita Ayavashkin and Dawson Baker. Both of them being able to get their 10th goals on the season as Ayavashkin gave Binghamton a one to nothing lead and then Dawson Baker just 51 seconds later ends up tying us up at one here at the second intermission. It's time to update you on the rest of the scores around the FPHL here on this Friday evening. Four other games all in action right now. We'll start with the one that got started last from the Raising Canes River Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's the battle of the two teams in the bottom of the Continental Division, Baton Rouge and Blue Ridge. And how about a fast start and a quick start for the home side, the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Michael Haskins, he got the first goal of the game at the 823 mark as he was able to make it a 1-0 game. Jake Cox with an assist of right from Bryce French made it 2-0 at the 1001 mark of the, sec of the first period. And then at the 1125 mark, it was Curtis Hansen making it three to nothing in favor of Baton Rouge, who sit at three eleven and zero. Blue Ridge, rather Whitfield, the Blue Ridge three nine and two coming into this season. So three nothing Baton Rouge in front right now. That one at the first intermission in Louisiana. Looking elsewhere in that rest of the FBHL here this evening. We talked about it before we hit the break. Columbus and Mississippi from the Columbus Civic Center. And a good one between the two sides at the second intermission. Columbus led 2 to nothing after a pair of Justin McDonald goals in the first period. And after the two first period goals, Mississippi, they came out firing. Justin Barr cut the lead in half with just two minutes into the second period. And Lucas Helen at the 10-19 mark tied things up at two. Before it was Josh Petrantonio at the 18-39 mark. He was able to give Columbus the lead once again, 3-2, to two before Mississippi on the shorthand, on the penalty kill. Able to tie it up with just 49 seconds remaining in the second period. And so at the second intermission at the Columbus Civic Center, Mississippi trying to help the Thunderbirds out. Trying to come from behind and take down Columbus, who coming today tied for first in the Continental Division with the Thunderbirds. On the other side, Binghamton in the first right now with 35 points on the season. They lead the whole FPHL. Taking a look elsewhere, we head to Michigan. Last time we talked to you about Motor City and Port Huron, it was all Motor City in that one. But how about, might be the night of comebacks here this evening as Port Huron and Motor City tied at three with 12.32, rather at the 12.32 mark of the third period at Memorial Arena. Two first period goals from Motor City had them in front two to one at the end of the first, but then Port Huron unable to respond with a pair of goals, pair of unanswered goals, one of those coming on the power play in the second. That made it a three to three game. And so, uh, so as that one continues to roll along with seven minutes or so remaining in the third period, it is Motor City and Port Huron tied at three. The Thunderbirds will see both those sides coming up next weekend up in Michigan on Friday. It will be at Motor City, and then on Saturday, it will be at Port Huron as the Thunderbirds after tomorrow night, which is a 6.05 puck drop here at the Annex. They will head on the road for three games with that closing against Blue Ridge on the 22nd, and then the final game before Christmas on the 23rd against Columbus. One other game in the FPHL here this evening. And it's from First Serena in Elmira, New York. It's the Elmira River Sharks and the Watertown Wolves, the two teams in the cellar of the Empire Division. Watertown, though, 10 points ahead of Elmira coming into today with 17 points. Elmira only 7 points. But right now, the River Sharks handling the Watertown Wolves. They lead 7-3 to three with about 14 minutes to go in the third period there. How about five second period goals for Elmira? They were able to rattle off five in a row. They scored six unanswered at one point before it was Trevor Lord be able to snap that at the 1840 mark to make it a 7-3 game for Watertown. But Elmira coming out firing 
here tonight. Trevor Lord, though, for Watertown, he's got all three goals. He's got a hat trick in that one. But right now, it is Elmira in control over Watertown by a score of 7-3 to three with just about 14 minutes remaining in the third period there. But right now at the second intermission here at the Annex, Carolina in Binghamton tied at one with about eight and a half minutes until the start of the final 20 minutes action here on a Friday night in Winston-Salem. We'll come back to reset things for the start of the third on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fan. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Intermission rolls along one to one between Carolina and Binghamton after the first 40 minutes of action as we're closing in on the start of the third period. Goals from Nikita Ivashkin and Dawson Baker have us where we are in this second intermission. It was Ivashkin on the power play being able to tip one home and make it a one to nothing game at the 16-17 mark before Dawson Baker was able to tie it up with just uh, just 51 seconds later as Carolina and Binghamton in a good one once again every time that these two sides square off they always end up playing some high intensity high quality hockey and no different here tonight the shots on goal on our contact LLC shots on goal tracker Thunderbirds out shooting Binghamton 28-19 a short contrast from the first two games this season up in Binghamton as Carolina in game two of that series was outshot 50 to 21. They were outshot 40 to 27 in the first game. And in those games, in the final or the first game of that series, Carolina, they only had two shots in the third period. Binghamton had 11. But then in game two, Carolina really outshot from the jump. They only had 21 shots compared to the 50 for Binghamton, who had, who had 20 in the middle 20 period, 20 minutes. There in Binghamton. But right now, these two sides tied at one. Carolina had led. Heading to the third in both of the games this series so far. Coming into tonight, Carolina had led the all-time series 7-4-1. to four to one. And here, Winston-Salem leading 3-1-1. to, one to one. First time that these two sides saw each other is back on March 25th in 2022 as a Binghamton win 5-2. And Binghamton winning the last one coming in here this evening. Carolina trying to extend its seven-game win streak. They haven't lost since the last time they've seen the Black Bears back on November 11th on Veterans Day at the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena. So Carolina trying to keep the good times rolling and try to be able to come away with a winner here in this third period of action. This one's lived up to the billing over the first 40 minutes of action. 
You know it was going to be an intense weekend, a high intensity weekend, and high flying action. And we've had that over the first 40 minutes of action here in game one and two this weekend. Don't forget game number two coming up tomorrow at 6.05 p.m. here at the Annex. If you want to get here, you can head to Ticketmaster.com or come here to the box office at the Annex at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds to secure your tickets for game number two coming up tomorrow between Carolina and Binghamton. But this one's still to be decided over the final 20 minutes and maybe even more. The third period between Carolina and Binghamton. Puck drop coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care, we're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilsen and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up, everybody? My name is Zach Taylor, and I'm the owner of Lil Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds, and we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day, and go Birds. Hi, I'm Mike Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds. Back here for the start of the third period here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds. Annex, Carolina in Binghamton tied at one after the first 40 minutes of action. And it's setting up for what should be an exciting final 20 here on a Friday night in Winston-Salem. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB as well. Getting ready to bring you the final 20 minutes of action. Winner brought to you by Mustin and Crutchfield. Carolina out shooting at Binghamton 28 to 19. Mario Cavalieri, he saved 18 out of 19 shots so far here tonight. On the other side, Connor McNanima, he saved 27 out of 28 with both goals coming late in the second period. And so now another good one on hand between Carolina and Binghamton here tonight as Cus Ford. He has changed his cage and now has a metal cage there after having the clear one for the second period. Billy Tyson, Kirkby, and Gus Ford to restart things. Here for the start of the third. One to one your score. 20 minutes left to go and we're underway. Here in the final minute, final 20 minutes here in winston Sam. It'll start with James Farmer retreating and taking it from Mario Cavalieri. He plays it on the backhand, Kirkby on him. It's intercepted, though, at the half fours, and Kirkby gets it back. Kirkby holding, throwing off the back of the cage, gets it on the deflection, but Clay Keeley walks up the far side out of the attacking zone, throws one off of Roman Kramer's body. It comes in on McNanima. He tries to play, ends up being poked back out. This one's played off of the boards, back out to the neutral zone. James Farmer has to wait for Ford to get back on side. He finally does. This one's dumped in. Behind his own net with Gus Ford pressuring. Roman Kramer converging as well. Is Dakota Pond who has an assist tonight. And he leaves a far sign for Daniel Stone. 50 seconds in to the third period. One to one between Carolina and Binghamton. Here in the first to two this weekend. 
Daniel Stone setting up behind his own net. Gary Pastuka out in front. Plays it off the boards. And it's taken by Tucker Firth. Plays a quick touch pass to Bonanchik, who's trying to slide it to Salak. Instead, it's taken by Connor Smith. Dances around Firth into the corner. Just throws one off the side of the cage. Comes back out far side. Boylar lets it go by Avashkin, the lone goal scorer for Binghamton tonight. And it's Jesse Anderson chasing after into the corner. And it's whipped back to Joe Kennedy. Pastuka, quick touch pass to Firth, who skies this one in off a deflection. Weaver loses it. Pastuka throws one in front, trying to find Panache. It comes back out to the point. Peony will throw one in, takes a deflection, rebound. Ends up being controlled in the near corner by Boilar. Pastuka just a half second late getting there. The near half board, Salak circling. Good line for the check line so far. This one's banged off of the boards. Kept in by Firth as he's able to send this one back in. Weber, far corner. But Panachik chasing after him. Spins away from him, plays it near his side to Boylar. Boylar quickly plays, plays it off the back of his cage and finds it on the near side before Jacob Schnapp. Wax it back out to the red line. James Farmer now at his own blue line. Loses it for a second. Salak recovers. Gets it back to Bioni. Trying to get a quick stretch pass to Schnapp. They say they got a deflection to it. It comes out far side. First one to his Petita. Quick shot. Now it's controlled in front by JT Walters. And lofted back out to the neutral zone. And they're going to say that was played with a high stick by Butita. There were 17-28 remaining in the third. We're tied at one between Carolina and Binghamton. And it'll bring up a face-off in front of the Thunderbirds bench in the neutral zone. Binghamton with five third-period goals against Carolina this season. They had two in that, fir in that first game. They were able to tie it up and send it to overtime with just five seconds left. With the extra attacker out there and six on four on a power play. And they had three unanswered in the third in game two. Carolina trying to have a different fortune here this weekend. Off the ensuing faceoff, Justin Bioni zips it around near side. Petito whacks at it. Instead, it goes to Walters, who almost throws one into the face of Kirkby. He gets out of the way, but it's played by Bioni. Backhands it to Petito. Snaps one up to Schnapp, a little too much on it. And his back collecting is Liam Anderson. Leaves it for Thompson. Schnapp trying to keep it in at the blue line. Comes back out to the neutral zone. Thompson throws it off the boards right in front of the penalty boxes as Petita plays it on the ricochet. And he holds in his own defensive zone. Good stretch pass up to Nate Keeley. Up the far side. Keeley walks in a shot and a blocker saved by McNanima. Rebound comes out near side. Thompson. Over to Liam Anderson, who comes to his D partner, JT Walters. Plays it off the cage and takes a deflection off of the Zamboni doors. Here's Ford in front, and he's not able to get his stick there and pick it up cleanly after Schnapp got the turnover. Kennedy at the red line, in front of the bench. Throws it off the linesman, and it's held at the blue line now by Liam Anderson. Into the zone, Anderson on the back end, trying to flow one in, goes off of Clay Keeley. Ford's able to collect the loose puck. Cycles behind his own net, Gus Ford with that cage. Gets it to Kramer, who whacks it over far side. This one's sent all the way back in. Cavalieri calling for icing, and it will be with 16.09 remaining here in a tie game at one in the third. Ford will ask for the draw to the left of Magnanimo, who tonight has saved 29 out of 30 shots. On the other side, Mario Cavalieri saved 18 out of 19. Cavalieri winning the first matchup in a shootout between these two netminders. Ford in for the draw. It's one, though, by Jesse Anderson. Played out on the near side. Clearing attempt by Daniel Stone. It's thwarted by Kramer as now Ford in front of the Zamboni door trying to poke it free. And this one's lofted out to the neutral zone. Ivashkin and Clay Keeley battling. Keeley will be able to hold him off for a second. Now circles back. Carolina only five defensemen tonight after the departure of Gregory Felder on Monday. Keeley losing an edge and it's played quickly. Here's Ivashkin. Joe Kennedy able to step into it. Kramer trying to flow when this pass is intercepted by Bond. They had to wait to get onside. Now here's Smith. Walks in a shot and a good block by Clay Keeley. Ivashkin gloves down the rebound. Has on the backhand. Plays it out far side. Stone a quick shot and that one goes wide on the near side. Ivashkin and Baker battling. Baker's able to win it and find Joe Kennedy. Kennedy across the red line. Trying to dance through. Gets ran into by Stone as the Thunderbirds get fresh legs out there. 15-10 remaining in the third pier. We're tied at one. 
In the first of two this weekend, Thomas Ray into the attacking zone. Dispossessed. Here's Salak. Salak going one on two. Gets this one in deep before Weaver plays this one high off the glass. Bioni gloves it down. Puck loose at the edge of the zone. And it comes back out to Thomas Ray. Ray snaps it far side. And Binghamton will reset with 14.43 to go in period number three. Backhand pass up to Ray. Walks in into the slot. He gets ran into by Bioni. Cavalieri touches it to Farmer. He gets it to Pastuka. Good snap pass. Here's Jan Salak in the attacking zone up the near side. Salak dancing in a quick shot and a save by McNanima. Puck is still loose though. It comes back out to the point and is played by Samara before he gets ran into by Tucker first. James Farmer, he will reset. Caroline in this check line will go off. The Farmer will play it off the near side. It's got Binghamton in the middle of a change as well. Firth will rattle this one in as the Thunderbirds chase after it. Dominic Dumas, the first one to it. Plays it over, far corner. Schnapp trying to dance away. Pokes it back out to the point. Joe Kennedy at the blue line. Sends it to his D partner, Tucker Firth. A quick shot and a save by Magnanima. And he covers with 13.53 left to go here in the third period. Just over six minutes into the final 20 minutes of action here in Winston-Salem. Both sides still trying to find a go-ahead goal. We're back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready. And here in the third period, Carolina and Binghamton are tied at one. And coming out of the media timeout will be Carolina with an attacking zone faceoff, trying to find a way to beat Connor McNanima. Here tonight, 32 shots for the Thunderbirds. Only one has gotten by the netminder. On the other side, Mario Cavalieri has saved 19 out of 20 shots on her Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. All our third periods this season are brought to you by Mustin and Crutchfield. And then this third period, Carolina trying to find a game winner here. They went down 1-0 at the 16-17 mark of the second period and answered 51 seconds later with Austin Baker's 10th goal of the year and are now trying to find another year where they come from behind victory over the Binghamton Black Bears. Those meetings lived up to the hype though. Two teams at the top of their respective divisions as now the Thunderbirds, after some maintenance on the ice in the near side, will play as it looks like some ice has popped out on the near side of the boards. Quick stoppage here and it looks like they're going to have to do more maintenance. So Carolina trying to pick up their eighth straight win and trying to improve to 7-0 and here at home. In the six games, the Thunderbirds have recorded at least three goals. Season I, 8-1 victory over the Blue Ridge Bobcats back on November 17th. They have a plus 17 goal differential here at the Annex and have averaged four and a half goals per game across the first six at home this season. A stoppage here with 13.53 remaining in the third period coming out of the media timeout. As Paul Jackson talking with one of our referees this evening. It's Kenny Malak. Now he has a chat with Ken Radolinski. One of our officials this evening, one of our referees. So it looks like for now the ice 
looks to be all right. After a long stoppage, the they still take a look at it. Update you on the games around the rest of the FBHL while we have the moment. Update you on that one in Columbus between Columbus and Mississippi. Just under five minutes into the third period, Mississippi and Columbus still tied at three. And that one at the Columbus Civic Center. Looks like everything's all right now. It'll be an attacking zone faceoff. So the right of Connor McNanima, Tyson Kirkby and Nick Keeley get tangled up on the draw. And a couple of guys whack at it. And it comes to Daniel Stone. Plays on the forehand over the far side. Joe Kennedy there at the point. They'll send one in. Now it's shouldered away by McNanima. Thompson cycles it back over to Stone. Has to get rid of it quickly. Played now back out to the, uh, the blue line. Schnock keeps it in, throws it to Keeley. A shot and a save by McNanima. Point Blake opportunity. Here's Kennedy. A shot and a glove. Save by McNanima. Oh, a couple of good opportunities for Carolina in a short span by Connor McNanima. Big save there, and he keeps us tied at one. Steve Harrison brings out the first line. Gus Ward, Roman Kramer, Dawson Baker, James Former, and Clay Keeley, the defense. with 13-25 remaining in the third period. Faceoff is one by four. Baker controls a bouncing puck and sends it in to Kramer. Cycling out, and it comes back out to the half boards. He now walks the blue line. Walks around Ivashkin near Dot. Holds, leaves it for Ford. cross ice pass. Clay Keeley sends one in, trying to find a deflection, and ends up being deflected into the protective netting, and it looks like it's going to be an attacking zone face-off for Carolina. So Thunderbirds trying to keep the pressure up here in this third period. Ford in for the draw again. Going up against Jesse Anderson as... Anderson, he's going to be tossed out, and Connor Smith will replace him. Face-off is one to Baker. Tied us up. Just under three minutes to go in the second. Behind the net, four trying to get there. Goes past him as walking down the far side is Weber. Weber snaps it near side. Ivashkin trying to wait on it. Said he runs into Clay Keeley, but he's able to get there in the corner before being sent to the ground. Gus Ford trying to fight off a few white sweaters. It's left for Kramer. Kramer trying to sizzle it over to four. Then said this one sent all the way down. Cavalieri calling for icing, and it will be. But 12.36 remaining here, and the final 20 minutes of action in regulation. So a lot of time in the attacking zone for the Thunderbirds here in this third. Now a big draw for Peter Panacic to the left of Magnanima against Jesse Anderson. Higginson, they get their forwards in check. It's the face off. One into the corner by Manachik. He has him on the back. He was trying to get to Pastuco, but a stick got there instead, and it snapped near side. Bioni will dump this one in as the Thunderbirds will go in and chase. Boylar leaves it near side. Comes back out on the far side. Connor Smith, quick touch pass to Anderson. He gets it right back until it goes over his stick. Panacic walks in, finds Pasuka, and he's not able to get a shot away. Nice job there by Dan Weaver. His own still not cleared, though. Salak and Pasuka are able to keep it in. Salak spinning. Tangled up as this one's lofted all the way back out to center ice as Joe Kennedy, he gloves it. We'll try to send this one in, but puck bouncing around high in the air, and it's whacked all the way back to Yuri Pastuka. Came in today with three goals in his last three games. Panacic, a shot and a save by McNanima. Going straight down into the butterfly, and he's able to cover with 11.45 remaining here in the third period. Good luck there for Peter Manacic, who's got 21 points on the year, three goals and 18 assists for the Czech Republic native. And shot going right into the Binghamton logo of Connor McNanima. Big draw here for Ford. 
Tied up with Kirkby as it pokes free and sent all the way back out. Farmer will chase after it in Circle Bay. He leaves it for Tucker Firth. Carolina with only five defensemen here this evening. Goes off a skate and forward gets it back to his defenseman Farmer. Plays it near side to Firth. Hope checked at the blue line and sent back in. In the corner, Farmer against Logar. With Thompson joining, puck still loose in the corner. Kramer holds up the near half board, sends one cross ice. To Tucker Firth who just whacks it off the boards, but it's kept in. A quick shot from the point, and that was deflected into the corner. Farmer has the rebound on the backhand. Gets it out of the zone, but's dispossessed. Kirkby just floats one in. Firth will backhand it over to Farmer. A pass comes back down into the high slot. Is backhanded over for side. Quick shot goes wide on the near side from Liam Anderson as Kramer corrals the rebound and floats it back out. Anderson with Ford closing on him. With 10.43 remaining in the third, Kramer intercepts in the neutral zone. Leaves it for Ford in the slot. Ford ends up being poked away by JT Walters into the corner. Kramer, though. Gets it over to four to one siren, and that one sails high. Carolina continuing to put the pressure on here in the third. We're still tied at one with 10-20 remaining here in the final period of action. Big hit there by Jacob Schnapp on Ryan Terse right at his own defensive blue line, and John Batita walks in. Batita dances his way into the corner, spins away. Holds, gets it back to Schnapp. A quick shot save by McNanima. He got the pad there before it's whacked back behind his own net. Daniel Stone running out of time. Ends up being poked away, and now him and Schnapp are tied up. Stone able to win the one-on-one -on -one battle, but it's thrown near side. Nate Keeley back to his twin brother, Clay Keeley. D to D pass, Kennedy. Trying to throw it in, instead it's whacked over to the near side. Nate Keeley trying to get this one in deep, but it's cut off and lofted back out to the neutral zone where Joe Kennedy ends up misplaying it for a second, but just off of the bench is Yuri Pestuka, and he's able to settle things down as Dakota Bond will have to wait in his own defensive zone with nine and a half minutes to go here in the third period. We're tied at one between Carolina and Binghamton here on a Friday night in Winston-Salem. Two sides split the first two meetings up in Binghamton just inside a month ago. This one takes a deflection and ends up in the second row. And with 9-18 remaining here in the third period, we've reached another media timeout. Carolina and Binghamton tied at one. We're back with more from the Annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Well, this one, a pretty good one here on a Friday night at the Annex. Carolina in Binghamton and a highly touted matchup. Currently tied at one apiece. Nikita Ivashkin gave Binghamton a one to nothing lead at the 16-17 mark of the second period before Dawson Baker's 10th of the year. Tied us up just 51 seconds later. Carolina with... A lot of zone time, attacking zone time that is here in this third period, but it's still yet to be able to get one past Connor McNanimo, who saved 36 out of 37 shots tonight. On the other side, Mario Cavalieri, a much quieter night for what he had to face in those first two games against Binghamton. He faced 89 shots in Binghamton just inside a month ago, including 49 in game number two. He saved 46 there. But tonight, much quieter for Mario Cavalieri here at home. 9-18 remains here in the third period in this third period, which is brought to you by Mustin and Crutchfield. The shots on goal tracker brought to you by Comtech LLC here this season. Don't forget, game number two coming up tomorrow at 6.05 p.m. here at the Annex. Game two between Binghamton and Carolina. Make sure to get your tickets on Ticketmaster.com or come to the box office here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex to be able to secure your tickets for what should be another exciting night between the Binghamton Black Bears and the Carolina Thunderbirds coming up tomorrow. Also, don't forget on Tuesday, it's another edition of the Coach Harry's Show live from Dave and Buster's over at the Haynes Mall. Join myself and the head coach, Steve Harrison, starting at 7 p.m. as well as a special player guest as well as we talk all things Thunderbirds for an hour. 
Network. Coming up live from Dave and Buster's on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So they do more ice maintenance during the media timeout, and now will be another attacking zone faceoff for the Thunderbirds. 9-18 remaining in the third period. Carolina in search of a go-ahead goal. Trying to hand Binghamton only its second regulation loss on the year. And actually going to Anderson in for the draw, and it's won by Salak. Walks in, and a quick shot. Ended up being saved by McNanima. He got the shoulder there. Slofted back out to Salak on the back here. Trying to leave it for Manachik. Instead, he runs into two white sweaters. And Anderson, he controls, brings it right out in front of his own crease, plays it far side as it bounces off of the boards in front of his own bench. Now here comes Smith on the far side. Smith, a shot and a save by Cavalieri. Rebound still there, though. Puck loose in the crease. Cavalieri goes down. Another incident. Puck still bouncing around. It's not cleared yet. And before it's still kept in, whacked it in the near half boards. In the corner, Ivashkin, he gets ran into. Farmer walks it out of his own defensive zone. Trying to leave it for Salak. They get tangled up at the blue line, but a big save there by Mario Cavalieri, but an offside is going to be called. Here with 8.33 left to go here in the third. So relatively quiet for Mario Cavalieri up until that. A couple of opportunities for Binghamton after Connor Smith was able to get in on an on-man chance. An update from that game in Columbus, Mississippi, taking a 4-3 lead in the third period, just about at the halfway mark there at the Columbus Civic Center. Faceoff is won by the Thunderbirds. Kennedy rattles it around, played on the near side by Boylar. Kramer pinching in, is able to get it to Ford. Ford spins around, throws one back out into the slot, comes back out to the point. Kennedy walks the blue line, will try to float one in, takes a deflection. Kramer trying to leave it there. No one home, though, as it's played on the near side. Thompson snaps one over and out of the attacking zone. Here comes Andrew Logar. He gets poke check, but it's to be able to it's sent right back in by Boylard for Tucker Firth, who plays it near side. He takes a hit in the near corner. Kramer loses at the blue line, and he ends up sending Logar down. No call from the officials. Kennedy, puck bouncing in his skates, almost loses an edge as he stepped on the puck and said Firth, he loses an edge behind the net. Firth from his knees, trying to float one back out. It's knocked around, though, by Austin Thompson. Now four guys battling in the corner. For it. Pokes free to Tucker Firth. Sends it to his D partner, Joe Kennedy, here with seven and a half to go in the third. We're still tied at one. Gus Ford. One on four, rattle it around as the third line comes out for Steve Harrison. The stretch pass is intercepted in the neutral zone by Clay Keeley. Rattles this one in, takes a hop and dies behind the net. Dominic Dumas applying a nice hit on Liam Anderson before it's cleared out of the zone and into the neutral zone. Here comes Josh Fletcher, backhands it in. That one goes off with a bar. Cavalieri might have lost that in the lights. It's thrown back out in front, though. A quick attempt from Ray. Doesn't get all the way through. He gets it back at the near half boards. Walters from the point. A shot save. Rebound thrown back out in front. Puck loose in front of the net. Poking around at it. Comes back out to Petita. Petita controls. And hand goes up. And they're going to call an interference. Jacob Schnapp is going to go to the box for two minutes for interference with 6.52 remaining here in the third. Had multiple bodies in front of the net, and it was cleared back out. Matita and Dumas looks like they were trying to get a quick stretch. And Schnapp unhappy in the penalty box. And so now Carolina trying to kill off a massive penalty here. Third time tonight that Binghamton will go on the power play as now Dominic Dumas comes over and takes a seat as well. They have Schnapp for the interference as it's still five on four though and it's one and here's Ivashkin in the attacking zone. Five on four action here. Near side, Kirkby sets up. Back out to the point. Bond, far side. Connor Smith circles back out. Quick shot, takes a deflection. Loose on the far side. Thrown in on Cavalieri, and he covers with 6.32 to go here in the third. So they call Schnapp for an ins interference, and then he's called for a misconduct, for an unsportsmanlike conduct. 
Face off, one back to the point. Smith keeps it in, plays it near side. At the blue line, it's Pond. Five on four action. Over the next 90 seconds, Carolina trying to kill off a massive penalty. And that's a good start with Clay Keeley rattling this one all the way down. McNanima leaves it for Pond. There is 6.10 to go in the third. We're tied at one between Carolina and Binghamton. It's left for Ivashkin, walking up the near side. He spins, loses an edge, but gets it back down to the point. Pond at the blue line, sends it far side. Smith walks in, leaves it near side, wide open net. Ivashkin scores. Tic-tac-toe from Binghamton as Nikita Ivashkin gets his second on the night and his 11th on the season. And with 5.58 left to go here in the third period, Binghamton's taking a 2-1 lead over Carolina. So Ivashkin on the power play in the second period gave Binghamton a 1-0 lead and then they were able to now take the lead once again. Uh, Nikita Ivashkin's second power play goal of the night. So the Thunderbirds trying to come from behind now, trailing two to one with 5.58 remaining in the third period, back to five on five action. As Sucker Firth will reset things, snapping this one into the far corner. Bucked loose at the skates of Pestuka as it looked like he got caught up in his pants and it was played with a hand pass. And one of our referees having Gus Ford come to the penalty box. Ford now just chatting with Schnapp. Ford playing with that cage after he was hit high back in the first period. He missed the final six minutes of the first period. Came back out with a clear mask in the second, but changed the cage for these final 20. 549 remains here in the third. Two to one. Binghamton in front after Nikita Ivashkin's goal. Thompson's gonna be the first one to it in the corner. He throws one off the side of the cage. Deflects right behind. Joe Kennedy taps it back out to the point. Boylar keeps it in though, cycles it back around Firth. Able to dance around Thompson. Slides one over to Salak. He gets ran into. Logar now dancing in. What Firth able to get a stick there. Weaver keeps it in. He throws one off of Joe Kennedy into the far corner where Logar cycles it back down for Ivashkin, who's already got two tonight. And into the near half board. Salak's able to dispossess him. Here with 5-10 remaining in the third period. Firth behind his own net. He holds Carolina. 6-0 here at home this season. That in danger right now. Yuri Pastuka on the far side trying to float one into the slot. The fine Salak, but instead Manachik just whacks this one back in cross corner. Goes past Pastuka. It's played by JT Walters. Man gets thrown down at the blue line. James Farmer thrown down. With 440 left to go here in the third period. Carolina trailing two to one. And Farmer and Anderson having a conversation after the fact. But Carolina trailing two to one. Trying to find a late equalizer and try to be able to salvage something here at home. We'll take our final media time out of the night. Carolina trailing two to one. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. It's MapleChaseCC. 
for Binghamton. Carolina trailing, 2-1. to one. Nikita Ivashkin at the 14.02 mark with assists from Connor Smith and Tyson Kirkby. As Binghamton in front, as now before the faceoff, Roman Kramer and Austin Thompson having a chat, and the faceoff is won by Gus Ford and plays it back to James Farmer. They're able to get it out of the zone as a quick touch pass to Gus Ford. He finds Roman Kramer dancing through, gets hit from behind as the puck now is taken by Dakota Bond. On the far corner, his stretch pass, a little too much on. It comes all the way down. They'll not have enough for icing as Clay Keeley. He collects with 4.18 remaining here in the third period. Keeley from behind his own net. will bring it to the neutral zone. Backhands one, trying to find Kramer. A little miscommunication. And now it's backhanded by Kramer, trying to find Ford. It's loose at the blue line. Kramer picks it up, walks near side. Roman Kramer into the corner. Runs into two white sweaters, puck bouncing around before Bond sends it up the far side. Josh Fletcher will loft this one high in the air. Back to awaiting Justin Bioni. Plays it near side for Kramer. And he'll rattle this one all the way in. Carolina went off for a change. Dominic Dumas now joining. Ford intercepts, holds behind the net, trying to throw it down in front. Comes back out to Kennedy, takes a deflection. Kennedy able to keep it in the zone, but it's poked all the way back now as Bioni back to collect with three and a half minutes to go here in the third. Carolina, their seven-game win streak in jeopardy. Here at home against Binghamton. Boilard throws it off the back heel of Connor Smith. Batita will send this one in. And the man goes down, Nate Keeley at the blue line. Boilar in the near corner. This one that whacked around. Batita gloves has it at the point. John Batita circling. Brings it far corner on the backhand. It's Jesse Anderson on him. It's now Dumas battling. Trying to dance around a defender and he will. Comes out near side. Dumas trying to angle a man off. Is now him and Boilar tied up on the near corner before Weaver is able to play the bouncing puck over far side. 2.45 remaining in the third. Tucker Firth able to keep this one out of the zone. Ivashkin, who's got the two goals for Binghamton, will just send this one in. And now the conversation becomes, when does Mario Cavalieri make his way to the bench? And when do the Thunderbirds bring on the extra attacker? It's whacked back out to the near blue line. Cavalieri was calling for it. Steve Harrison said to wait. Stone in his own defensive zone. Plays it on the back end. Sends it far side, a quick touch pass is intercepted by Kennedy, has it on the dot, trying to throw it out in front. Said it comes to Salak, over to Banachik, leaves it right back for Salak, there goes Cavalieri. Extra man coming on, Pestuka walking in, the puck bouncing around, near side, throwing on on McNamara, puck still loose in the slide, a shot, oh, and that one goes wide. Rebounded, Tim, is somehow... Gets through to McNamara, and he's able to freeze with 2-0-2 remaining here in the third. But the net is empty. Mario Cavalieri to the bench with six on five action. It'll be Salak, Ford, Manachik, Pastuka, Kennedy, and Firth. And Steve Harrison will use his timeout. With 2.02 remaining here in the third. Steve Harrison uses his lone timeout. 2.02 remaining in the third. Carolina with the net empty. Mario Cavalieri to the bench. Two goals here tonight. Give it up by Cavalieri. Didn't have much of a chance on either one of them. A deflection in front after a whiff by Tyson Kirkby. It was just left for Ivashkin in the slot on the power play the second time. It was a beautiful find. Going tic-tac-toe. Connor Smith was able to walk in, send it over. So a wide open net. Connor McNanima has saved 38 out of 39 shots here this evening. And now six on five. Roman Kramer, Gus Ford, Peter Banachik, Dawson Baker, Jan Salak, and Yuri Pastuka. Six forwards out there. For Steve Harrison, and the faceoff is won by Binghamton and played on the near side. This will be whacked back out to the neutral zone. 
Kirkby holds at the red line, trying to get it in deep. Ford. Leaves it for Bonacic. Baker gets it back to Ford here with a minute 40 left to go in the third period. Roman Kramer into the attacking zone. Sends one cross corner. Salak the first one there. Leaves it on the back here for Bonacic. Puck bouncing around. It's not able to be kept in by a sprawling Pastuka. Instead, he taps it back to Roman Kramer who circles at the center dot and walks into the attacking zone. Kramer on the forehand behind the net. Leaves it near side when it's intercepted. Takes an annex hop and comes back out to the neutral zone. Pasuka controls at his own blue line. 75 seconds remain here in the third period. Carolina looking for a late equalizer. The net is empty. Mario Cavalieri at the bench and six on five action. Ford at the blue line. Searches, a quick shot save. Oh, puck came three on the near side. Under a minute left to go here in the third. Binghamton leading two to one. It's tangled up, comes back out. Smith trying to clear, he will. He throws it in on net and it goes off the side. And this will go for icing. Connor Smith inches from nearly ending this one. But instead it'll be an attacking zone faceoff. Both these units out there, you can tell they're tired. We still got 46.1 remaining here in the third. As of right now, Nikita Ivashkin, a pair of goals in the game winner. The 14-02 mark. Ivashkin with assists from Connor Smith and Tyson Kirkby. At Binghamton, a 2-1 lead. So the face-off to the left of McNanima. Ford and Kirkby in for the draw. It's tied up. Pokes free into the far half board. Salak in the corner. Back to Kramer. Kramer. Tangled up. Man goes down in the corner. 32 seconds left to go. Carolina needs to get out of the corner. More and more bodies. So the puck still jammed. Binghamton's just trying to have it jammed up as much as they can. Pasuka keeps it in, leaves it near side. Baker a one-timer, and it's blocked. Austin Thompson, he blocks it and is able to clear. Pasuka will chase down with 13.3 left to go here for the third. And the last chance for Carolina coming up. Both sides. Tired here in this one. 13 seconds remaining in regulation. Does Carolina have a late winner? Rather a late equalizer. The faceoff is one. It comes all the way back down. It ends up going wide of the net. Baker has to chase back, and he will. No icing with five seconds and four. A quick stretch pass is intercepted. Ford, one last chance. It's a lock. That one comes in on McNamara and ends up going wide, and that will do it. The Binghamton Black Bears are able to come into Winston-Salem and hand the Thunderbirds their first home loss of the season. Nikita Ivashkin wins it for Binghamton on the power play at the 14.02 mark of the third period. And Binghamton, they're able to get their second win over the Thunderbirds here this year as Carolina now. They want an explanation as to why it wasn't icing there at the end. Well, anyway, it, it, this one is over. Binghamton, a two to one victory. And now Carolina will have to have a response coming up tomorrow. We'll take a break and come back with the start of Thunderbirds post game after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. 
For over 85 years, Muston and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local group. In Salem, Carolina, they fall at home for the first time here in 2023-2024. By a score of 2-1 to one here against the Binghamton Black Bears after Nikita Ivashkin, he gets the late winner with the 14-02 mark of the third period on the power play. Binghamton able to come away with a 2-1 to one victory. Binghamton, they got the scoring started with Tyson Kirkby, not Nikita Ivashkin. It was a late change on the score sheet, but this is from Dakota Bond and Connor Smith. I made it one to nothing at the 16-17 mark of the second period on the power play. I think Carolina responded just 51 seconds later. Dawson Baker able to get his 10th goal of the year with assists from Gus Ford and Joe Kennedy tied us up at one. That is how the two sides went to the third period before Ivashkin was able to win it with just under six minutes remaining in the third period. So Binghamton, they're able to snap the Thunderbirds seven game win streak here tonight. They also hand Carolina their first loss at home as Binghamton has now won six out of their last seven, rather make that seven out of their last eight, including the win against Carolina back on November 11th. As Binghamton, they improved to 12, one and three on the year, 38 points for the Black Bears in the Empire Division at the top. Carolina drops to 11-3-0 in the season, still sitting at 29 points here this year. We'll take one final time out and come back to wrap up Thunderbirds post game after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Draw. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Brent O'Reilly back here on Thunderbirds postgame. We're getting ready to wrap this one up after Carolina drops this one here tonight against the Binghamton Black Bears by a score of 2-1. to one. Carolina suffers their first home defeat in 2023-2024. The shots on goal tonight in our contact LLC. Shots on goal tracker. Carolina out shooting Binghamton 38-26. to 26. Goals from Tyson Kirkby, Dawson Baker, and then the eventual game winner from Nikita Ivashkin at the 14-02 mark of the third period. Ends up being the difference maker as Binghamton, they improve to 12-1. One and three on the year. They improved to 38 points this season. First in the whole FPHL. Carolina drops to 11 3 0, still sitting at 29 points. Coming into tonight with a tie with Columbus for first in the Continental Division. Just a quick update on that one. Columbus ends up taking a 6 4 victory over the Mississippi Seawolves with three third period goals. So Carolina now three points behind Columbus in the Continental Division. 
as Columbus improves to 10 1 2. But a tough one here tonight for Carolina as they end up dropping this one by a score of 2 to 1. But these two sides do it for the final time in the regular season tomorrow, a 6 05 p.m. puck drop coming up here at the Annex. Pre-game coverage starting here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB starting at 5 35 p.m. But that'll do it for us here tonight on a Friday night in Winston-Salem. For Logan Allen, Dylan Klein, Kayla Blazier, and the radio guy Rick O'Neill back inside the WTOB studios. I'm Brendan Riley saying so long for Winston-Salem. The final score, Binghamton 2, Carolina 1. Come on back at 535 tomorrow for game number two between Carolina and Binghamton. This has been Thunderbirds Hockey.